<laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Sim Nation podcast. Uh, my name is Pablo. That person there in the, let me think, on the bottom left is Jan, because uh, I'm Yellow. not watching. Then on the top right, you have that gal called Fallon. Me, hi. And we're missing somebody. Who could that? Oh yes, of course we have Mario, also known as this is Aster Bottom hey, Right. Mario, it's a Mario. Mario, <laughs> do you dance? Do you dance? Oh, no one dances me. with me. Right. I I actually think we should start the recorded version with some with an important, lovely topic that Dizzy has been a part of this month, and that's the Saint Jude Play Live Drive. Oh, yeah. um, and if you want to tell us more about it, if you if you don't know yet, go donate. Yeah, um, I mean, I can start with the real basics. I mean, I won't go too, too basic on it, but St. Jude Children's Hospital is a hospital that's located in Memphis, Tennessee, and it specializes in childhood terminal illness. Um, it also has a pretty hefty research department that is researching everything from cancer to flus and everything else, and all that funding that they get primarily goes to, to treating and dealing with childhood terminal illness. Um, and taking care of the families of the kids that are in that hospital. So, for example, if you unfortunately had to deal with a circumstance where your kid was uh, diagnosed, let's say, with, uh, with leukemia, uh, they would review your case. And, if, and this is for not just kids in America. This is all over the world. When we went out there, there was kids from absolutely everywhere. Um, and if you're accepted into the hospital, they take you and your family there and you pay for nothing. I mean, nothing. They house you, they feed you, they deal with absolutely everything that you need um, to get through your life so you can focus on living as opposed to dealing with a terminal illness. And this hospital is, I, it's a little difficult calling it a hospital. You call it a hospital to say that it benefits, but it's not a hospital. You go in there and you feel like you're in a public place that's, it's so unbelievably positive. You're walking down a hall and you're just like, okay, it almost feels a little bit like a high school when you first walk in. You're like, oh, okay. And you're going into different wards. Um, Chili's actually has a ward and it's called, uh, I believe the Chili Center. And you go down there and there's a big chili there and it's from the restaurant Chili's in America. And it's built with the, the donations that were made by people through the Chili's restaurant. And you're going through there, and you're like, oh, okay, this is really cool. And you're like, where's the hospital? And they're like, you're in it. You're in it. You're in the hospital. And there's different hallways and different themes for each hallway. Like one hallway you'll walk down, and it's a whole bunch of portraits on the wall that were – they have, like, art contests for the kids. And uh, not just kids. I mean, there's teenagers there as well. Um, and you'll see the different art that they drew, and then they judge it, and they have a big celebration for it. And then there's – you go down another corridor, and there's the – I guess I would call it the cafeteria. And basically, that's where everybody eats. If you're a patient, if you're a doctor, if you're a visitor, absolutely everybody eats in this cafeteria and nothing costs anything. Nothing costs anything. You go in there, they feed you, and you're good to go. Um, Incredible. They specialize in making sure that you spend as little time in a hospital environment as possible. And they do have a hospital center, like an area that looks a little bit like a hospital, but it's not what you'd expect. I mean, there's a little office and then it's just surrounded by amazing stuff. But the majority of the time, you, if you're dealing with this terminal illness and you're not like in a very bad case, you live at an area called uh, the Target House. And it's Target Stores funds this and donations done through Target. And we went to Target House 2, I believe. And you go there, and you walk in, you're like, okay, it's pretty cool. And then you start to tour the place. And you get to see what their apartments are and their living conditions. And it's, I mean, they pay for none of this. This is all paid for by the hospital. And it's just absolutely amazing. I mean, these people live in a very nice apartment, better than mine. <laughs> and they have awesome, everything's taken care of. You walk down one room, and there's the kids' room. And it is a... I don't want to call it life-size because that would be inaccurate, but you walk into the room and you're in a house, but it's, it's made smaller. So the kids have a house. So if they want to play house, they walk into the kitchen, a fully furnished kitchen. Like if you were to play house, if you were a kid, they have a refrigerator, a microwave, they have shopping carts over here. They have a table. It's, it's basically paradise for a kid, a young kid, but not everybody's a young kid when they're dealing with this stuff. You walk another room down and there's the teenager's room. And this room has every single video game system you can imagine. 
every single cool piece of technology that you can imagine. So you can distract yourself. I mean, you walk over to the left and there's just art tables so they can sit there and draw. There's a, a guitar over there so you can see it play. Oh, that's, that's the music room. You go down and there's another there's a music room filled with every instrument you can imagine, a big screen TV so they can watch sporting events. Um, there's another room. Uh, Sean White was that room. Uh, he donated that. And there's pictures of Sean White. If you don't know who Sean White is, he's a, uh, an American snowboarder. Uh, and he designed this room so you could take, you know, enjoy the atmosphere of this room. It's just room after room after room that are sponsored by companies and people that are designed to take your focus off what you're dealing with and your family's focus off what you're dealing with and focus on living your life and having a good time. And there's just, I could sit here and talk for hours about what we saw out there. And all I could say is that it is one of the most, it, I would be hard pressed and have to sit here and find another experience in my life that was as inspirational as going here. It was unbelievable. And we had started the St. Jude Play Live Drive on our channel last year, uh, kind of on a whim because I'm not exactly what you would call, hey, here's Dizzy Disaster. Everybody knows Dizzy, right? What, you mean Dizzy Kitten? No, the other guy. So <laughs> not a lot of people know who I am yet. I'm still kind of small. So I said, you know what? Let's see what we can do. And hey, there, there was a little incentive there to get a Twitch hoodie. And I was like, you know what? Hey, maybe I can get a hoodie out of the deal. I think you raise a thousand bucks, you get a hoodie. So I put up a, a donation thing and I asked, you know, let's see if we can get a hundred bucks out of this. And uh, that was fulfilled immediately by, I would say, the resident mother of the stream, one of our biggest supporters and somebody who I'm absolutely floored and, and forever in debt to, Joanna Hammond. She's actually in channel right now. And she donated immediately and we hit that number. She goes, put it up. And we hit a thousand within a week. We raised it to 5,000, hit it in three weeks, raised it to 10,000, hit it in a couple months later. And then at the end of the year, we put it for 15,000 just to see what we could do. And we did it. We were number eight in the world to do it. Um, in comparison to other communities, we had some that were 150,000 follows on Twitch, 500,000 follows or subs on YouTube, and they raised about the same as we did. I mean, we, we did something that per number and per hours spent fundraising, we broke a couple of records. And uh, inevitably, because of the timing of it, which was completely random, I ended up going to Anaheim twice last year. Once for GameStop Expo, once for BlizzCon, because I was number one for a certain weekend, and the, the prize was a trip to BlizzCon. So I was like, oh, I got a phone call. I was like, you go to BlizzCon. I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, went to Memphis, Tennessee this year to actually go to the hospital as well. And, you know, it there's so many different charities out there that are doing such noble things. Uh, I had the opportunity when I was at PAX East to meet with the folks at Able Gamers and uh, Operation Supply Drop are two of the ones that we're looking to get into eventually. But the one that, that, that I think the one that we're going to focus on for the entirety of when I spend my time here is St. Jude Children's Hospital, just because we've seen the direct effect by it. And we've had people come in our chat and say one particular story that I tell routinely, and most of the folks in, in chat will know this story. Um, during one of my St. Jude Play Live drives, my pug was snoring, and you could hear it on the cast, and which she routinely does. And uh, he said, you know that snoring you hear in the background? I said, yeah, that's my pug. He goes, my, ch my kid's doing it right now. I said, oh, that's pretty funny. He goes, the only reason I have my kid here today is because of folks like you raising money for me. And I was like, okay. That's pretty good. Cool. Validation. Validation. So, yeah, I mean, I wish I could sit here and tell you every, I wish I, I filmed the entire trip there. I, I filmed quite a bit of it and I haven't released most of it yet, but it was amazing. It was so inspiring to see what these, it was faith in humanity restored. Not to say it was shattered in any way, but sometimes you watch what's going on out there. You watch the news, you watch Twitter, you watch social media, you watch some of the stuff that's going on streams, on YouTube, the drama, and you're like, man, this is a rough industry to be in with. And then you see something like this, and you see the amount of money that we're raising for kids with terminal illness, which essentially is the future of gaming. Um, they're going to be our developers. They're going to be the people who are playing the video games that we develop. You know, and uh, absolutely amazing. Just absolutely amazing that gamers could come together and do all of this. And they had a goal that they wanted to hit last year. They shattered it. 
And now this year, we're already on pace to shatter last year's goal. It's awesome. But yeah. I can, yeah, I've like, read it's, it. It, forever. it's going amazing. I was in the stream <laughs> yesterday, so you were about halfway through your your first goal. Um, yep. And it's truly amazing. You, I think I, you posted some pictures either on Twitter or somewhere, um, or was it on your Facebook, where you guys can go check them out. They are truly, truly, truly amazing. Um, yeah. And Snibik, can you post the link, uh, the donation link in chat again for those who didn't catch it the first time? Um, <laughs> Sorry. Snibik will put the link in chat if you want to donate. It truly is an, an awesome charity. I, I took a look into it. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of weird though, because I'm actually uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the Saint Jude Play Live trailer yet, but I'm the second person on it. I know you're uh, in it. I haven't seen it, but I know you're yeah. in it. Zeke is actually the first person who goes, "Hey, you!" I believe, and he goes, <laughs> and I, I forget exactly what my lines were, but we all had to go into a, a little studio and record our lines. So I recorded that whole thing that you see there, and they just took the best part for everybody. But if you walk into a GameStop. My face is in that commercial, so it's a little strange walking into a GameStop and be like, mm, "There I am." <laughs> that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I have I have seen a couple of people tweet at you going, "Did they just see Dizzy in GameStop?" You're, you're famous. Yeah, it was just yeah. GameStop. I got stuff. <laughs> but I'm honored uh, and and privileged to be able to say that everybody in there are people that are you know a lot of these people are household names in terms of if you watch twitch i mean obviously not household but if you're a twitch viewer you know who the majority of these people are and then there's me <laughs> and it's like you know what a year and a half ago i wasn't even doing this and now i'm able to make an impact to help kids around the world with terminal illness like to me that's wow we've actually um i've actually decided that we're gonna but 90% of donations that go to our channel through Twitch this month will go towards you in the charity. You know what you should do, um, though? I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm probably, as an individual, not going to raise personally as much as I did last year. The reason that is is because I'm not, as much as I would love to go to these conventions and be able to help promote our stream, not really interested in that this year. I want to raise money for St. Jude, and I want to raise more than we did last year but i want to do it as a group so if you're looking to donate especially if you're a caster or a youtuber you guys sign up on there make an account and join disaster relief which is my team and you can join that just by clicking the donation link that's on my channel and it'll say join dizzy's team make sim nation tv as a group so people can do donations under you through you if you guys raise 500 bucks it's le it's half as last year one of you is going to get a twitch hoodie and to me I think that's cool that we can get as many people hoodies as possible this year. That would be better than going to any convention. It really would to see all these people. Last year we were able to give out a couple of hoodies too for the people who raised the most. Uh, Cmosh uh, dot com got one. He's actually up to uh, how many this year? I think he's up to two hundred bucks this year. Uh, see you later, dude. wasn't in uh, wasn't in the fallout zone last year. He's in this year. He's raised about two hundred bucks as well. So they're almost there, and it's day four of this fundraiser. So. We'll definitely, definitely, definitely do that. I'll, I'll set it up after the stream. Absolutely. We'll make sure that Moobot so. spams everyone with it because it really is an amazing cause. Um, Absolutely. Don't donate it again. Thank you, Joanna. Thank right you. on, Joanna. Um, so, yeah, we, we are definitely, right. definitely happy to participate in any way that we can because yeah. it is an amazing cause. And I, I do encourage everyone watching to go check it out and kind of. If you ever have. Any questions about like St. Jude? They're very transparent about where all this money goes. They're very nice, and all, their website's very complete. Their social media is very active. But if you have any questions about St. Jude Play Live, I actually know the guy who runs it, so I have direct access to him, and I can definitely check stuff out for you if you have any questions about it. So don't <laughs> hesitate. Yeah, that. Just go to Dizzy's channel Sweet. and spam him with questions. Ooh. He's always happy with questions. <laughs> even, right. even, he even, he'll answer you, know, you in a Mario. He sits, sits there every day and, and, you know, talks and answers my questions very, very patiently. If I don't pay attention to you guys, though, I don't have an audience. That's what exactly. it amounts to today's right. Twitch world is I could sit there and be like, this game is great. Oh, there's people talking. This game is great. Fact of the matter is, I'm done growing the second I do that. Or I start lashing out at people in the audience, I'm done growing. The, the key to success in the Twitch world today is yourself. And if you're not going to pay attention to people, they're not going to pay attention to you. So well, you know, but that is what Twitch is. It's, uh, it's the interaction with people. That's yeah. the main difference between just re recording a video. 
yeah, but if you just record a video and that's in, you know you play a game, record it and upload it to YouTube, well, that's YouTube, right? And then you just maybe occasionally check on the comments, but this is more live, you know, because people yeah. are in, in this together. Uh, they feel like they're playing with you, even if you're the guy playing. The biggest, the biggest audiences are still for the major league events, for sure. Yeah. Because I mean, that's oh, yeah. that's an. But um. But most of, yeah. most of it, like, they're it's not trying to interact with the people playing. They're just watching. It's like watching TV in that case. Bingo. Exactly. It's, it, 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 it's media of the future when you're interacting with the actual caster. It's kind of yeah. cool if you think about it. You're able it to talk does. to your television and it's able to shout back now. It's so awesome. Yeah. Also, Snivik just posted your $2,610, so 53% towards your goal. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? I, you, talk, you talked about this in depth a couple of streams ago. Uh-oh. About what, what are good things to kind of follow when you are trying to stream or when you are streaming. And one of the things that kind of stuck with me is persistence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just, just have a schedule. Keep going. Make sh second of all, make sure you interact with your audience. And third of all... Make sh I feel it's important that you play games that you enjoy. Because I, I see a lot of people streaming games where you can kind of see they're not into them. Just because maybe they get views? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so let's play another round of Hearthstone. <laughs> some strategy involved in that. But, I mean, honestly, there's so many better people to ask this question than me. I'm going to answer with the limited knowledge that I have. But I'm not even considered... Uh, successful yet in the terms of Twitch. I mean, I'm, I got something. I got, I'm partnered, so that's that's huge, and that's a huge mm. thing to overcome. But you know, I mean, sometimes you're gonna play games that you don't necessarily enjoy to try to get viewers. But I have found that doing this for the little time that I have, uh, I don't feel satisfied when I'm focusing on numbers. And I've, I've made an active effort, especially over the last few months, to completely detach myself from numbers. And sometimes some numbers will slip away from you. And by numbers, I mean viewer count, uh, views, subscribers is the one that keeps it running, and follows. And some of those, when they get lower, they could actually make a tangible effect on you. Like you could start realizing, wow, the cost of running this is a little bit more than I'm making. But in order to really entertain people... When people are looking at us right now, and yes, there's people looking at you right now, they know exactly what you're thinking. The CBA not <laughs> exactly. But if I say to you guys, I'm having a great time. That is not true. They don't know what I'm thinking. I did not hide a body yet. <laughs> <laughs> but they can tell if I'm full of shit by looking at me. They can tell. They, they, they look right through and they say, oh, he's not having a great time. Or they can tell when I'm frustrated. And I can see it in my numbers. It reflects. I've actually looked at that. So when I'm playing a game that I don't necessarily enjoy and I'm doing it for the sake of getting a lot of viewers and a lot of followers and eh, maybe a few subs, those are subs that aren't going to last, they're followers that are not going to last, and they're viewers that are not going to last. And I've done that before and I've made that mistake and I'm, I, I, I pulled away from it. And now I'm focusing on going back to basics. I actually did about 12 new games last week and I loved a lot of them. So <laughs> hours in a day. Oh, I lost count. But there's only so many hours in a day, and I can only do four hours of casting a day because I do the full time job on top of this. And, right. um, you know, play what you love. And you know what? If you're playing what you love for five people, five is going to turn into ten. Ten is going to turn into twenty. Twenty is going to turn into thirty. And eventually, someone is going to stumble on your channel and say, "This guy's doing what he loves." Um, a lot of this is luck. Until somebody says, "I like this person." you're going to have a lot of trouble growing very exponentially. I mean, you could do something amazing and, and do like a jump the shark moment or do something viral and really get a lot of viewers, but essentially growth and permanent growth on Twitch is community-based in that you're going to have to find somebody who looks at you and really says, all right, you can grow without that, but it's a lot more difficult. I streamed. And it's a lot less fun. <laughs> Plus yes. you can enjoy it. I mean, that's it's, what it's I, I, when I stream because we do daily. Stream, try to make I do it daily job. streams too, and uh, on our channel. And what makes it fun for me is that community. That's right. what makes stuff fun. It's it. I always love when I see people start popping in chat, just having discussions amongst themselves, or we're having discussions, or there's certain people that you kind of memorize because they're there a lot and they talk to you and. 
that's, that's what you. makes <laughs> it have the fun. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's so many different ways you can approach this and be successful, but inevitably it boils down to who stumbles upon you and what they do for you. And if you, you can go ahead and ask, hey, Tom Cruise, can you give me a retweet? And you might. <laughs> and you might get views. It might be the next biggest thing. Or you could just hope and do a good job and have a good time and sit there in anonymity for as long as you do. And then one day somebody, like, let's say, I'll we'll use Tom Cruise example again, stumbles in your channel and says, I like this. And you get a retweet. And that, that oh, will go oh. further. It's, it's, well, it's amazing. I can, I can talk from experience. This. Two weeks ago, we did, we did a regular City Skyline stream, right? the regular tweet out, oh, we're playing hashtag City Skylines, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, that day, someone, I think it was oh. totally Moo came into the channel to watch. Hey, Moo. He retweeted yeah, on his Done. account, on the City Skylines official account, and, this, and a bunch of people started retweeting it. It's, mm -hmm. that exp yeah. it's, it's that experience where you do something for yourself and then get noticed yep. is completely different than if you perpetually try to get noticed. That's how you grow for, yeah. for real. And we had when you do so nothing. much fun that day. We had so much That's fun weird. today. We're, we're kind of weird though, because we have the, you know, we have the YouTube, we have the website, and like we were like spread out across many, many things. Like we like to write articles and have the how-tos in the, oh, yeah. the mod section and so on. And uh, like we're actually new to Twitch. We, are, uh, we haven't actually officially started like every day streaming until Jan started like, uh, well, with the launch of uh, Skylines, actually. Well, yeah. Wasn't it? Like a week before. We, we shifted focus. Well, I mean, we didn't shift yeah. focus. Well, I mean, we, we realized like, in example, Let's Plays are not that suitable on YouTube anymore, according to what I'm seeing, really, because uh, it feels like a perfect format for Twitch. But as YouTube, I feel like content like, reviews or guides or look how to do this or here's a very cool specific thing. I think yep. in that case, YouTube is better because you, you can come back to it, right? And you want a concise kind right. of content. But these extended long experiences, I think you rather want experience on Twitch. Well, so. you can approach Twitch a lot of different ways. Uh, I think right now the most successful way to approach Twitch is to build your audience outside of Twitch. Because there are a lot of people in Twitch, but you're only going to find a lot of people in Twitch to come into your channel if you're getting good foot traffic. That's a key word that not a lot of people will talk about because nobody wants to admit they focus on it. And what foot traffic is, it has to do with placement. So let's say that you decide you want to do Skylines tonight and you're the top person doing Skylines. You got an audience of about 50 people. Not a lot of people are doing Skylines right now. It's kind of not in the mo not in the everybody's uh, eyes at the moment. GTA is really where it's at right now. GTA is a big game. Everybody's playing GTA. So let's say that you do Skylines, and all of a sudden, let's say somebody big like Lyric says, I'm going to do Skylines tonight. And he does it for a little bit. He goes, I'm going to log off. Boom. And just logs off. He doesn't even plug you or anything like that. All of a sudden, you're the second person doing Skylines. There's a lot of people who want to see more Skylines. They're coming to see you. And some of those people could be big people. Some of those people could be your future subs. Some of those people could be people who have a million subs on YouTube. Some of those people could be almost nobody on the internet, but somebody big IRL, somebody could be a supporter that ends up funding you and, and getting you to conventions where you meet those big people. I mean, you never know what you're dealing with in your channel. And chances are, somebody who is a big caster or a big celebrity or somebody who has a lot of influence, the chances are more in the favor that they've seen you than not. So with that being said, it's so important that every time you're on the camera that you're enjoying yourself and you're giving that you're, you're allowing the people who are spending the limited time that they have on Earth, because inevitably none of us are immortal as much as you'd want to be or don't want to be. You're not going to live forever. Yeah. I am. No. It, <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's something less off the checklist. That's, Pablo, you because know, we can I, play sim simulation games. He won't let me play zombie games. Oh, no, no. So, Fallon, Fallon, stop listening to Paolo. Just play what you like. Trust me, I'm to get to the last game. It's fine. But you did play that, that zombie game at the end. <clears throat> Although apparently it's kind of popular. H1Z1? No, actually, Project I just was so not. I play State of Decay. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. But yeah, it's a lot, a lot. A, a, another thing that I feel important is when streaming is to switch out what you're playing. Because 
you, yeah, you've been doing scanners for too long. I think <laughs> it's just every now and then it's good to play something different. Well, it's try. If you're I, not having fun, switch. Otherwise, stay. Oh God, I did. But you were yeah. He I was did getting two months like consecutive go. of Skylines. But did you enjoy the two months consecutive of Skylines? Yeah. But then Do one it. day I, I sat down here and was like. I don't feel like playing Skylines today at all. <laughs> well, there you go. Play something different. <laughs> Jan tried to be yeah, there. Trust but that instinct, man. That instinct so goes away when you start to cast and you start to get viewers because you're like, I'm getting a lot of viewers at Skylines. I'm going to go and do Skylines tomorrow. But, yeah, but if you do it for that purpose when Skylines fizzles, which it, I don't want to say it fizzled right now, but in the social media eye of it, it's very low compared to what it was a month ago. I had audiences of, uh, my biggest audiences ever, of 1,300, 1,400 while playing Skylines. Um, that happened to be the same weekend I went to PAX East, and I had to shut everything down while enjoying Skylines and go to PAX East. And I was like, oh! But in, it was a future decision that I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm happy I made because of things down the line. But if you're sitting there and you're playing Skylines, you notice your audience number is going down, and that's actively affecting you, then your cast is going to suffer in the long term for it. Um, but if you're sitting there and playing Skylines for the sake of having that big audience, your cast is going to suffer in the short term and the long term because of it. Because people are going to be like, once you switch over back, like for my example, I switched over to Don't Starve, people are going to be like, where's Skylines? Unfollow, unsub, see ya. You know. And then but, you go over to Skylines and people are like, when are you playing Don't Starve again? Mm -hmm. And you get to deal with that. But it's, you want to, as a variety caster, sell yourself. But you said, oh, we, it's good to switch games. Some people, they stay in the same game forever, but that's their thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, somebody who I'm, I'm good friends with. I actually met them at St. You Play Live. Her name is Trade Chat. Uh, she goes by the name Panzer. She's a WoW streamer. She does WoW. That's what she does. She does WoW videos on YouTube. She does WoW stuff. She does WoW cosplays. Everything about her is WoW through and through. If she did another game, she probably could. Just kind of an event. But if she decided, I'm going to go play Don't Starve for a month, <sighs> her audience would evaporate. Unless she was having fun. If she was having fun, people are invested in her. She'll be okay. So, it's, you see, yeah. it, it I could can be hours on the tangents of what success means. But at the end of the day... <laughs> There is no formula. Yeah, no. Gotta go through it, it, really. In <laughs> exactly. No, but yeah, so yeah. We, did, we did a lot of Skylines. Well, we pretty much we did like over. a quick curse on Twitch right now. <laughs> if anyone was watching, we made a quick what? curse. Like, all right, this is what you do. It sounded like curse, but I'm not saying curse. I'm saying course, okay? <laughs> Be persistent, do what you love, interact with your audience, and build a community. Those are the four important things. Where and that's a, that's People a, know a, that their time in their life that they're spending with you is a positive experience and positive for them. Because if people are yeah, going to come and hear yeah. misery, everybody out there is dealing with their own misery right now. They're dealing with their problems. You're going to bitch, you're like, oh, I had to do my work today at my job. Yeah, they had the work too. That's how they're able to afford the internet to be able to watch you. Oh, well, you know, my family's going through something. It you know it's good to let people know what you're dealing with, but if you sit there and you go, oh, what was me about it for a long time, people are dealing with that too. Probably, in most cases, worse than you are. So if they're going to come there and hear misery, they're going to think about their own misery. They're going to think about that. They're going to be like, I don't feel good. I need to go watch something that makes me feel better. Exactly. Take some time out of their day. Give them, show them a good time and, and go from there. Because at the end of the day, you'll find that to be more rewarding than any numbers will ever give you. It's It's... Always interaction, and they will always notice when something's wrong, anyways. Oh yeah. Um, but so hey, uh, by the way, I wanted to um to take this opportunity that uh, actually Dizzy mentioned before. So if you're yeah, because uh, you know, gonna left side, right side. Um, if because uh, um, yeah, I made a video talking about uh, City Scanlands, not versus Sim City, more like City Scanlands and Sim City, just talking about yeah. about the differences, and apparently. It's, uh, Dizzy has his own thoughts on it, so uh, actually, um, I was wondering if we could just talk it out a little bit, like, because <laughs> I think that is... Ready? Come on, uh, Dizzy, let's, let's just do it with your <laughs> fish. Do it. Man, let's That's... do it. Let's go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. bring it on. on Earth. I can't play sports. I can't run. I can't, you know, do math, as some of my wave on in channel likes to donate in, in fractions. So he does like 119 and 432, and I used to calculate up the numbers, and I'm just like, you, 
I can't believe it. I mean, I appreciate the support. Don't get me wrong, but they do it just to torture me. My gift that I was given on Earth was the gift of gab. I can talk about anything forever. So if you want me to talk, I will, for sure. All right. Well, let's All do right. it. SimCity versus City Skylines. I wrote a 10-page article <laughs> on it. Website. Um, they wanted me to write a short, quick review on the difference and why City Skylines is a good buy and what it does to compare to SimCity. And I warned them it's going to be 10 pages. And if I they didn't, didn't post it, send it to us, we'll post it. I don't know where it is. Okay, this is really funny. We are right now playing City Skylines, and the title is We Have Perfect Airport. Nice. Just say. Pablo, did you not fix it? <laughs> I, did, to go. I, didn't, okay. I didn't start the stream. All right, let me. Uh, well, I'm going to put Skylines versus SimCity. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But here's the thing about SimCity. I owe a lot of my success on Twitch to SimCity. I owe it because I went to SimCity and I met pretty much every major player that made a difference in in, in my channel. Between SimCity, Don't Starve, and I believe Landmark were the three games where I met just about everybody who was like a big part of my channel. I played SimCity because I played every Maxis game, which I'm sure you guys did. Look at this stuff. Yes. I'm sure you guys have and this I played the weird ones, like Sim Ant and so on. Yep, Sim Ant. I mean, here's Sim Life, Sim Tunes, Sim City, Sim Isle. Uh, who were we got? Sim Safari, Streets of Sim City. I mean, I, I lived Maxis. I love Maxis. And everything yeah. is amazing. It's so literally my favorite company. Well, where? So I was talking with somebody who was part of my team, and I said, I'm going to try Sim City. And I said, hey, go for it. Let's see how bad can it be. And the reviews then were awful. I didn't play it on launch. So I didn't have that experience, but the reviews were like, if you buy SimCity, you're dumb. Uh, That's what it boils down to in the most censored way possible. So I said, I'm going to try SimCity. So I tried SimCity, and I loved it. I said, this is good. I go, the maps are a little small, but I like the way this game feels. And I played it and played it and played it, and I had the fortunate uh, experience of meeting all the folks from Maxis, some of them who are, I would say, lifelong friends at this point. Um, and that was really what kickstarted my stream, was playing a game that people hated. Because I played yeah. it and enjoyed it, and people wanted to see the other side of it. They didn't want to see the hate about SimCity anymore. They wanted to love it, and they wanted a reason to love it. Sometimes you have to tell people a reason to love something because they need validation. I'm like that, yeah. too. If I do something, and I feel real confident about it, and, I, and I don't, I'm not, still not 100% confident about it until I find that validation. I think a lot of people are like that. You know, I was actually one of the retarded people playing SimCity past the launch of Skylines on, on Twitch, so... <laughs> oh, hey, I mean, Elric still does yeah. it just fine, you know? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, it's good to still show, uh, you know, the love that you have for those games that you like, you know? And by the way, it's, it's, I think SimCity, a big part of the, the whole chaos was just the, the failure with servers. Sure, it was the small size maps and so on, but I think that the initial like fire just burned everything. Like Everything else had to be wrong because of that initial rage that just first you know, impression, got out of control. Man. If you date somebody yes. and, and they, they burst into flames while you're sitting down having dinner with them, are you going to go date them again? Maybe, yeah, if that's what you're into. I might. Right. That is so disappointing, though. Pablo no. made fun of me because I couldn't play SimCity because I couldn't figure out the plumbing. Yeah, but that was a, a previous SimCity, not SimCity 2013. There's no plumbing. <laughs> I know. That, that game was actually perfect for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was automatic, which I kind of don't like doing on Skylines. I feel like it's a chore to deal with, you know, laying down under the roads, the same thing that I'm already, like, I already laid down the roads. That's it. Why am I doing this again? Uh, it, for one sense, I sort of get, like, the need, like, like, I got some power in my city, like, control, I mean on my city because I'm doing all these things. But besides the power lines to take power from point A to point B, I don't see the point of doing it with the pipes. Um, and, uh, but anyway. Well, I mean, City Skylines attempted but, to do the most- Oh, kind of You broke. I she didn't broke. mean to, why is No, that? I think oh. I, I'll put it this way. There. <laughs> Neither game is for everyone. I mean, no game is for everyone anyways. And some people enjoy SimCity no. a lot more than they enjoy Skylines. I'm the complete opposite. I don't find fun in SimCity, the latest one, that is. Most people played it less than an hour. I played it about four hours, and then I got bored. <laughs> the new SimCity? Mm -hmm. That's Jan it. doesn't like SimCity. He doesn't like a lot wow. of things. 
I put like Dude, 300 hours, Sim I think. Cast, Sim City cast for you alone and show you why that game is amazing. I saw what I played, and then I wanted to buy it, and then I realized, no, I'm not throwing that much money at it. Well, you can get it for like 10 bucks now if you wait for a sale. Exactly. With the I'm waiting engine. for a sale. <laughs> but that game ushered in the next era of simulations. I think in 10 years, we're going to look back and see how great that game was. No, that, that was that was future. my thing. That the Glassbox engine is the most amazing engineering piece ever, yep. except poorly implemented. You're right. I agree yeah. with you. I think they were way too ambitious. So short. It would have been good if they gave them ten years development time. Yeah. EA is not going to give you ten years. Yeah, development. That's not going to work. <laughs> Who's going to put them on? Like, but also, I, like, yeah. I mean, the, the Glassbox engine. They even started to make promises that they, they couldn't really like. They would go ahead and say that you know the citizens were persistent and you will have a place where they live. They actually said that, and eventually they were like, you know what, we cannot make them persistent because that's just I don't know why, just too much processing. I don't know why exactly. Persistent and the prototypes. I don't know if you guys have heard a lot of uh, after Max is shut down. Well, I heard I knew about a bunch of this beforehand, but after Max is shut down, a lot of the information came out about what SimCity. There was a lot of fixes. Stuff was fixed. I mean, city size, unfortunately, couldn't have been fixed because it wouldn't have run on the baseline PC. But um, most of the problems in that game have been fixed. They were just, they have to go through a Q&A process and a certification process. And they sat in certification hell forever because there was no funding to do it. Nobody to certify it. So um, for those of you who played a lot of SimCity, uh, Great Works, there was an issue where traffic would build up in your Great Works and there was no no fix for it and that would cause it so traffic would extend out from your great work and go all mm -hmm. to every city in the region and basically shut down your cities it was fixed it was fixed pretty quickly too went to the certification and sat there and then it was deleted i assume once they uh they moonlighted sim city yeah there was no yeah. it there was sim city could have sim city was hyped and was Told to be a lot more than it ended up being. Did you ever see the yeah, trailer? It was the big comeback <laughs> of Sim City, where everything was simulated. Whatever you saw, that 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 little smoke coming out was connected to the pollution in the data layer. Like everything was an actual representation of what's happening in your so city, much. as opposed to cars appearing and disappearing. Have you got but ever that. gone into the modding of it? Like, there's so many data layers. There's a weather data layer. There's a trash impact data layer. There's things like that that they never used because they didn't have the time to do it. Yeah. How how small was the team? Because you know, I saw the last uh, SimCity uh, sort of uh, uh, from from somebody that worked on SimCity. Uh, they saw a presentation on GDC that was um, uh, was the, this guy, the art director, Ocean Quigley. Um, he yeah, actually said, like, we had a very small team, but these are the techniques we use. And he explained all the, the graphical techniques, but how I, small was that? Small for I EA or small for... It was less than 50. I don't think it was more than 50. I could be wrong. I mean, it wasn't right. as small as Skylines. Skylines is right. tiny. I think Skylines yeah, is they a were like 13 by the time they launched, but during the yeah. development it was way less. Yeah, I mean, it was very, very small. I mean, the people, I, I got a whole couple of people way into it, and they said, listen, because I, I, the moment I found out about this, I actually got Skyline's early access because of Maxis. Um, I knew the PR person over at Maxis, and I actually helped her with a couple of their, their official SimCity streams. And uh, she left the company and went to go work for Sega, and she had a promotion that we were going to do for the new Crazy Taxi, and I was like, I can't, I can't get it to work. And it was like, all right, no problem. She goes, but I have somebody I want you to meet. And she introduced me to uh, PR, Dave Martinez at Paradox. And he introduced me to Totally Moo. And that's how I was able to get into the City Skylines early access. Um, oh, we just had Pablo bug Totally Moo. Yeah. Well, I, uh, yeah. I mean, did you guys get to play it before launch? Oh, yeah, we, we got yeah. it. Uh, we got yeah. three release copies. That's solid of them to go for the people who actually cared about the game. Because you'll get an early access game, and they'll just hit well, the biggest we, players. We, we were very lucky in that respect that we were, that Pablo was, first Pablo was smart enough to go to them and be like, hey, you know, you have this Paradox Extra channel, you know, we want to do a Skylines podcast like every two weeks, talk about the game for 30 minutes, Dev Diary, stuff yeah. like that. So we did that for what, four months before release, five months? You did yeah, yeah, a, a couple of podcasts, so like it was every week, right? 
every two weeks. So yeah. I think we did every nine or weeks. ten of those for them. And smallest thing to do. And then, um, then we get, didn't get the copies when everyone else did. <laughs> so we kind of. It, it, no, it, no. It, no it, I'm fine. There was just a little bit of a mix up. Now the industry is starting to figure out how much of an impact folks oh, like us. Oh, you, you mean that, that we didn't get the same day? Yeah, we, we got that. We got them a lot later yeah, yeah. in the day. The guy told me, sorry, I, I, I thought I already sent it, but here's again. So we, we technically got it the same day, just yeah. on the night, because it was about whenever I contacted them, I was like, hey, by the way, were, those they, copies they you told me. so nice about it. And they yes. really didn't have to give us pre, um, pre-release copies. But no, I mean, they were very generous. I mean, uh, well, like I said, they could they, give it to someone. everybody playing it. They could <laughs> give it to somebody like Lyric and sell Billions of copies of the game instantly. I mean, that's that's a smart business decision for them to do that. But they yeah. decided to go with smaller casters, and that's something that I will. I know that they may have taken a hit. I mean, if Lyric had asked for it, he probably would have got it too. But they they decided to invest in the people that were invested in them, regardless of their size. And to me, that sticks with me forever. And they, if they said, "Hey, can we get a favor from you? Can you do this? Can you be a part of this event?" Hands we down, have huh? to thank them so so much first of all for giving us the pre-release copies because that gave us a huge boost yep but yep. it's funny because the the pre-release streams the five streams i did that day, i did well, i did what 40 hours of streaming in five days smart <laughs> you were doing a lot of and stuff. You, you those were, were the most there. viewed streams we've ever had of 400 mm-hmm. 500 people in them yeah second play was the launch of oh, the sims track. 4 yeah um, yep, it's the about, foot traffic formula right there. When people find you, when people know how to find you, they find you. It was amazing. I I just I love the fact that people were so interested in the game that even with our crappy streaming, <laughs> they stuck around. Your crappy streaming, my streaming's okay. Oh, shut up, Fara. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. If you're not gonna take the risk, you don't deserve exactly. the reward. Early access yeah. removes the depth risk. No, I wouldn't say that. I'm, you know, I'm actually in early access. I'm about to launch in a month, and for me, it's really hard to develop a game with no budget. So early access is like a Kickstarter in which I can let people give money to the cause and let, help me finish it while they get instead of a share, they get the game. But uh, it also means that many people can abuse of it. You know, but for me, it's an opportunity to finish my game without budget because I don't have money. <laughs> yeah, there's, so, there's uh, been a couple of cases of early access where they've cashed out. They, they just said, yeah. this game's going to be great. And they built this great game. Uh, one that comes to mind, which I think has been reinitiated, uh, was Stomping Lands. Uh, I believe Cube okay. World was another one. Mm-hmm. Great games. A lot of potential. Sign those checks. See ya. <laughs> it also oh, happened know. with a few Kickstarters. They were like, oh, we did like a thousand percent more than we expected, but now we can't finish it because we were growing and yada yada, so we could have wrap up. <laughs> you know, I never kickstarted into Star Citizen for that very reason. I always thought that there was too much money. I didn't too kickstart into it. I yeah. bought one of the ships when it was on sale, so it was like 20 bucks. Yeah. But I, I, I was looking at the Kickstarter and I was like, I, this doesn't seem right. Something seems fishy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot less skeptical now because there's way too many eyes on it. But let's say for the sake of discussion that Star Citizen failed or fails still. Mm. That's the end of Kickstarter. That's the end of Kickstarter, I think. I mean, maybe not the whole Kickstarter, but for game. That that was project. I think Star Citizen currently has, what, 70 million in raised funds from fans? Nobody will trust... Is Kickstarter ever again if Star Citizen fails? Star Citizen is huge. They've but it's not going to fail. At this point, they have no. so much stuff that it's already doing fine. And so, I, thank you. I did... I got tempted into it because I bought it on sale after the Arena Commander module came out. So you could, you know, fly your ship around and fight things and fight AIs, fight people. So that's when I started playing it. Oh, Star Citizen has 2 million uh, pledge right now. Oh, no. on Kickstarter. You have to go to their website. No, Star Citizen's way, 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 way more than that. Star Citizen... That was on their Kickstarter. I think their Kickstarter was for like half a million. Is it they Robert Space million. Industries? Yeah, Robert Space Industries. And current... They're the biggest yeah, we... Kickstarter ever. Currently... Because I, I can't find any like, actual number. FAQ. Where the heck is it? 
<sighs> Let me see. I'll just do, do the star citizen and number. There we go. Let's see if that gives me it. No, if, if I you, if you the front. Funds yeah. raised it 81 million. 81 million. <laughs> yeah. Star citizens, I'd say it's backers, uh, 180,000. So 100, I mean, almost a million people contributed. People's, I mean, I agree, that's a lot of money. But what if you put hell? things into context, like 81 million in a production, like an entertainment, entertainment production, is really not that much money. Mm -mm. It's no, it's they're so basically still... reaching a triple A status, but that you know, it's yeah. it's not like a lot. It's a lot for a Kickstarter. Oh, sorry, of crowdfunded. Uh, yeah, product. it was definitely five hundred million, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was something ridiculous. So although that broke the uh, the records, though, right? Yeah, but but even so, that gives you an idea of what people people are, are looking at, know. like an EA, you know. So eighty-one million. Um, I mean. For, for a small Kerbal, team, Kerbal Space maybe. Program is not a good stream game. You know, I was watching Dan, uh, Dan's Gaming actually play like it. for a little bit. It's a lot of technical stuff. It's a lot to yeah. learn. I think that if you know what you're doing... It's a lot uh, more fun. We yeah. See, oh, people will, on our stream, we sent Poland into space. We made a spaceship, called it Poland. It first exploded on the launch pad, and then we managed to get it into space and back. Oh. That, that's what we did. We just did it for like an hour and a half. There you go. But yeah. some people Kerbal wanted to see it, so I was like, sure, I want to try this out. I have it, why not? It's like um, Prison Architect and RimWorld. And even Don't Starve. I feel like with Don't Starve, I know how to play the game. I can answer people's questions. I, I It's probably my su most successful cast right now, um, currently. Uh, but with RimWorld, I have a lot to learn. With Prison Architect, I have a lot to learn. With Kerbal, I feel it's like 10 times those, where I'm just going to go in there and screw around, and people are going to be like, Kerbal, Kerbal, in Kerbal, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of beginning knowledge, math, math, and physics you need to know. <laughs> Especially with the 1.0 update. No way. <laughs> It's I can't. I can't. I'll, I'll have an aneurysm on stream. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. No I way. Couldn't, I was so the stupid. I couldn't yeah. figure out how to undock my ship from my launch pad. <laughs> it's just going to be explosion after explosion. I might as well just play Borderlands at that point. Yeah. <laughs> no, play that. Don't start. It's him who said uh, all of you will play and enjoy the universe. And the universe actually fits this channel so perfect it's retarded. Oh, but, universe uh, all of you write universe sim on a piece of paper and just tuck it away so I can say I told you Dude, no. <laughs> do you think it's going to be bad? No, he says we'll all enjoy playing universe sim. Oh, uh, I've, I've been watching that. That is the first thing I've ever kickstarted. It's one of two things I did. The other one is Deadwood. I put a lot of money behind Deadwood because uh, the folks over at Clay, aka Don't Starve Creators, put a lot of money behind it. I said that they know what they're talking about. So, But universe sim... Um, was the first thing I ever kickstarted, and I was very wary of Kickstarter. If that game accomplishes half of what it wants to do, that's Sim Universe. Sim Universe looks so amazing, so so. Amazing. If you had to put it in a nutshell, what does it do? What's the game about? Universe Sim um, is simulated planet travel. You're going finding different planets, finding resources, creating colonies, and keep it going. Like right. think about. What's now? What it's do? Yeah. What What does a good, as opposed to uh, sports, uh, horrible space stage? I mean, it does get horrible after a while. You know, I don't know. I'm entirely. Okay. Sorry, I was, I was hype what, what hype. were you asking? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so because nice. I mean, sport. Like, uh, don't get me started on sport. Let's just focus on the space stage. Uh, it was kind of cool, but then I feel like I wasn't really. Doing, I, I was just selling, traveling with spies all over the place, and every t once in a while being called back to some planet because there was some pirates or what have you, and I would ha I would have to like be the only guy in the universe to take care of all these issues, but uh, I didn't feel like it was fun. I, I didn't think they got good gameplay mechanics there. Now, if these guys are gonna focus on exactly that, then I'm sure they they know Did what they're doing. You play black and white. Yeah. Peter Molyneux. No. Yeah. Uh, basically, you played God. And what you did was you had a couple of people on on just sitting there, and the game actually starts the um, the storyline starts because uh, somebody's drowning and you have to save them. And you save them, and they go, "Oh, you saved us! We'll worship you forever." 
and then you help. It's almost like um, populace in a way. And you play oh. as God, and you get your worshippers to, you know, you gain worshippers by doing good things or bad things. <laughs> oh, nice job. <laughs> what the hell was that? Mate. So maybe I should stay with things. But I was actually just water. But yeah, Grass go, water. Um, <laughs> Black and White was that kind of God game. You, you played mm -hmm. as God, and then you helped your people survive and tr thrive and yep. take over other civilizations. And Universe Sim is, is pledging itself as, or selling itself as, that, but on a, on a on universal a scale. Yeah. And it, that's what makes it look so fun. It's, I feel like it's a lot of a combination of black and white and uh, what's that one, Fallon? From Dust. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like From Dust. I haven't played that. From Dust is It's a so... god one, too. It's another kind of but god game. But you, like, game, control, which... like, the parts of, like, water and earth, and you kind of, like, try to save your people so they can move on to the next. Huh. It's kind of like a, it's, hot it's a water fun water game puzzle place. god game. But, yeah, um... Universe Sim looks a lot is like black and white but on a universe scale and it just looks amazing. Black and White 2 is one of my most played games ever. I'm gonna put a description of Universe Sim in chat so people can read about this and I'll, I'll read a little bit just to give you an idea of what has me so excited about this. And oh, I know I it's a read. We did this the other day. I remember I was reading it. Yes, Papa, right? I told you about this the other day. <laughs> Your civilization it's, begins with reading. loyalty. Due to failed events, every action they perform that displeases you will generate wrath. This, in turn, allows you to unleash destruction on their planet. Just hit their planet with a meat. Just boom! The end. Like, that's awesome! I know! Yes. It's like, I want to be the evil god! No, I no. miss disasters in Skylines. They gotta get on that, man. Jan cannot be the god of any... No. no. I'll say anything. Why? John is like Darth Vader. No. Because it's <laughs> Why are you playing SimCity 2013? That game had some of the best disasters oh, I've yeah. ever seen. Um, it's, oh, uh, well, it's tornado was really well done. <laughs> it's it's awesome. physics. I can say, all I can say is that disasters might be on a list somewhere. No, I know that. No, I know they're working on that. But the thing is, is when. It, it's not going to be the first big content. But, no, see, tunnels. Uh, tunnels and... But, you know, many things that Skylines didn't have, and that is okay. They're, they're a small company. It's a new franchise and so on. But, oh, no, no. Uh, it's like, not swan them. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it seems that it had all these little things, like the little people that would talk to you, the, 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 you know, the disasters that were themed and so on. They had this little folklore going on, the llamas, if you may. Like, this Maxis thing, there's, like, a whole more to it than just building, 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 right? Right, um, it was personalization. That, yeah, that, that's pretty. It had, like, a little soul, if you may. I actually, it made it sound like, well, Jupiter was an attempt that was actually very hit, hit by many people, <laughs> including somebody here. But um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm looking at you, yellow guy. But, but, but. Yellow um, guy. I sometimes say it in... Uh, it may sound like very hard on City Skylines, but sometimes I say that it feels like it doesn't have a soul, if you may. But it's because it feels like it's trying to be like SimCity in many ways. It doesn't have its own personality, and then it doesn't have like these little things that say, oh, this is Skylines. Except for Chirper, uh, that, that's really the only personality hand that I feel like, oh, this is Skylines, you know? Well, I was playing SimCity the other day, and, uh, you know, a tornado kicks in, and starts to destroy my city, and then you know goes into the water instead of dirt. It starts to you know take up water instead, and it looks like it's this beautiful tornado. I'm like, this, this is Sim City, right? Like I can pinpoint Sim City, right? And then he put and it in the Welcome to Sim Nation video and yes. voiced it over with the creepiest midnight radio Welcome sex voice ever. Sim Nation. <laughs> oh eight hundred. Sim Nation. Oh yeah. About that. But yeah, no. <laughs> It's, it's, I've always kind of defended City Skylines on that regard, um, that it's a new game, it's their first city building yeah. game, it's a good platform that they can build on. And yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely the first. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, like, 
like there's so many great things about that game and I'm not knocking it. I, I gave it one of my highest possible ratings. I don't rate in numbers. I rate it in just like how much how enthused I am. But I don't know. Like while I wanted to go back on SimCity, uh, I don't, I mean, I do want to play Skylands again sometime soon. And I love their map editor more, almost more than the city game itself. But you have finished that second map. I know, I know, but I kind of ran, like, I was at the end of it, and I was like, I don't know what to do with this. So I just need to sit there and focus on it. But, I don't know, something about City Skylines where I'm like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, here's the games I can play today. I could play a loot game, I could play a loot game. I'm kind of in a FPS loot game sort of, uh, sort of mood, but, uh, and Skylines is always there, but, Borderlands, ugh. Well, it's like it's loot porn, porn. Like, <laughs> like, loot porn, sorry. Uh. Yeah, and I gotta figure out which one I want to do, because now I'm doing two at the same time now. Right. But, um, but yeah, we kind of we kind of went. I went yeah, to a different direction with Skylines. I'm now working on aesthetic cities. More yes. Than, more than going into that organically developed play as you go. So the current one we're doing is we're playing with everything unlocked and unlimited money, and we're just building aesthetically, just making it look the best we can. You should really focus, like, the, the best cities, I think, in Skylines are the ones that where the people spend a long time in the map editor before they build the city, and they know exactly how their city's going to look in it. Those we're are the best playing, ones, We're playing on a custom map. What map? A uh, map of Vienna. Oh, I thought you were going to say Disaster oh. Ridge. No. <laughs> <laughs> because we started out, and then I realized, oh, shit, I don't have it downloaded. Ach, we'll start on Vienna. We'll just build the airport here, and then we'll go over. To what was that? Be, uh, what is she doing? She's talking to her dad. Oh. Um, but, uh, Zappo, you were saying uh, Universe Sandbox 2. We did stuff on Universe Sandbox 2. Yes, we YouTube. even have one Simulation Lab on it. I simulation Lab means that no it's never which has a simulation to how it, what it does. But it was what fun. if we had two songs? That's the name. Ooh. Yeah, we did some... We got um, the answer. Quick answer: It's not good. We should have not two good. Sons. No, you, we shouldn't have two sons. Um, <laughs> no, we any have, like these, like three or four versions of. I have I have sons. another one recorded, but I need to edit oh, yeah. it. What if our solar system had doubled the amount of planets? Oh. <laughs> and I have it on different planes: so the normal plane, and then the vertical plane, and <laughs> so much. Oh, oh I man. definitely want to watch that. But yeah, we did Universe Sandbox. We got uh, Universe Sandbox to co uh, pre-release copies. So. It seems like something Joanna would like. She likes this sort of stuff. It's so much fun. There's also, again, yeah. a lot of maths and physics. Oh, yeah. I, like, three quarters of the stuff there, I had no idea what it was. I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to play around with this and see what happens. That's what a simulation game is. And then you explode the solar system into a lovely nebula. God, oh, I yeah. Stuck on this universe sim site. I'm trying to see when the release date is. I'm so excited about this game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I let down so bad. I know it. Mm. Pablo, oh, you man. need to um, work so your fun. magic on them. Yeah, I can't get a hold of them. them. Tried a couple times, so uh, it is what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll just shout. We had a um, half a million visitors for our city skyline stuff. Go, go, <laughs> give us. Give me, give me, give me. Yeah, we're, we're the, the biggest simulation website. <laughs> how many, how many, sim you guys would know this sort of stuff because I, I know what I'm up against with my competitors. How many really simulation like city style websites are left? A lot of them left when SimCity 2013 came out because they were like, a lot this of them sucks. Some of them died off now with City Skylines release because they couldn't keep up. Like, uh, what was that? Uh, city job. Exchange just died. Well, we we actually have uh, our biggest traffic right now is coming because of well the guides that we have for City Skylines, also the Sims, and the um, the mod section. The mod section is our biggest success right now. It, we, it just keeps getting a lot of views coming from straight from Google. Like we're not doing people search for like oh how do yeah this mod on you know simulation. I think so, if you, uh, I think if you Google City Skylines mods, we're like the third or the fourth on the list on the front. Right on, nice placement. I know. Yeah, actually, it really, it really changes because it goes from like second page to first place. Because uh, it really depends, I, I guess, in where you are, what We're you're currently fifth. for, and so on. Yeah, but if I search, uh, it could be different. Simulation mods. Um, let's say, in my case, we are first. Yeah. So, we're getting See, a lot of so traction. It will change depending, 
if you search City Skylines mods, it, it may be first for somebody fifth or or second page to another one. So that's uh, that's why we keep it updated. It's I think a lot of people appreciate yeah. that there's a curated section because the workshop itself is so filled with shit. Yeah, but, yeah. but it is true that simulation uh, games. Uh, I mean, well, it's hard to just simulation games. By the way, I like to say because they're I not that many. There's not that many. The workshop, the workshop being filled with crap was kind of their fault. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you would say a lot of houses that they just added a tree and we uploaded it. Do you well, have like an infestation? Those do that. Yeah. The people who are achievement horse, they want to go get that achievement that says upload a new work to the, the workshop. There's an achievement for it. <laughs> So, right. or is it to upload it or is it to modify something? I don't remember exactly which it was, but the saturation is kind of on. But yeah, but it was bound to happen. So, I, I mean, I think it's great everybody can upload, but, you know, that's where our curated mod guy, uh, directory comes in because, you know, we just go ahead and say, okay, this is actually very valuable. We think most people will find, find it interesting, or at least some people will surely will. There we go. Yeah, that's that's just like that's, that's, that's the There are two points in the day. Where Pablo comes down to the basement, where he keeps me and Fallon locked up. Right. The first one right. is right before the stream, and comes in with his whip, and he's like, "Stream bastard." <laughs> then the second is after the stream, and he's like, "Go curate, you son of a bitch." <laughs> and I have like, okay. just do like, I uh, yeah, I have a thing that uh, does the SimCity 2000 electric thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just I like work. Damn it! Thousand. I do. Where is it? Here it is. You can you can record my voice. Chapter one: Reporting heavy traffic. Yes. See that that is like the full glory of SimCity. Hell yeah, man! You're gonna regret this. You will regret this. Welcome back, Kieran. Oh. Good night, Zappod. <laughs> Good night, Zap. Anyway, Bye. With this, yeah. What am I getting paid? Um, for eating. <laughs> with yeah. We're not getting paid. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> You guys getting paid for this? I'm not getting paid. I want to know who's getting paid because I'm about no, to murder no, them and get their money. When we split the money on July, not yet. <laughs> Pablo says we split the money, but those like large YouTube checks. Yeah, we're in the. Yeah, he'll be like, "Here's uh, your I check. Can... Show it to me, and then leave." <laughs> yeah, most from the website, not checks in the mail. No, Pablo will Slaves just open don't get up. Checks and he'll he'll open up that little. Hole in the jail door that he has, and be like, "Your checks arrived," and then close it down again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whenever you came out, you can use that. Just... <laughs> I had a but, uh, uh, friend of mine who did that on YouTube, and he still actually uploads YouTube videos. Uh, one day he posted on his Facebook, "We're about to be famous on YouTube. Does anybody have a good bank we could use to, to deposit this money in?" And I was like, "Oh my god." Oh yeah. I want to make a YouTube video where I ask people to give me money and they give me money like that guy who asked for a million dollars and got somebody to give money. <laughs> oh. Or you can just hang out on the stream, just stream, and all of a sudden a wild dizzy will appear and be like, oh, here's 30 bucks. Oh, I did that oh, because well, you were talking about Smite, so. You want to come? Smite you doesn't want to it? work for me. For some reason, oh, it's not oh, to log in. Smite, uh, oh yeah, no, you don't... can't. I'll take the money. And play the game. Do it. Do it. Oh, Fallon, that money's gone. Fuck you. Oh. Jan had to pay insurance. <laughs> you are such a fucker. <laughs> you just took the money, you gotcha. couldn't even use the money, and then you just used the money for something else. For real stuff. Damn it. You should have bought a game pack. Yeah, right. I'm spending all my hard-earned <laughs> slave money here buying Sims stuff. Those royalty checks, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, man. Oh, God. We've been going for a while now. I know. I was going to say it's been over an hour. <laughs> we're, just, we're just rambling on now. We're, just... This is part of the after show. We're um, not even in the after show yet. We're not. Wait till we get to the after show. we we'll start talking about Listen, Pablo's nipple. Listen, after show, we're going to have to stay here for like 24 hours. I was going to say hang something earlier, but... It was kind of scary, so I didn't say it. Oh no! What? What were you gonna say? Did you guys hear anything about uh, Baltimore? Mm-hmm. Guess where I live? Oh, that. Near Baltimore. Scary music. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't live in Baltimore. You live in Rosario.
Rosario Argentina in Pablo's basement. <laughs> Are you living in Baltimore? <laughs> yeah, Fallon's from Baltimore. Oh, man. How's that going for you? Well, okay, I what's live going in the on? county, so I'm I didn't have a care for you, but Pablo knows nothing. Oh. We had, oh, God, we had some rioting. That was South America. We had some rioting uh, yeah. going on. Some crazy oh, stuff. They no. had to give us a I'm curfew. Like, like, what, what do you mean you had some rioting? That's just every day here for me. Like, what the fuck? I, I, the, I bus like, the bus goes on top of the like civil disobedience, I'm all for that. I think that's what changes stuff. And if you don't think it does, look at history. I mean, every time somebody stepped outside the lines, they change history, and I'm all for that. But I don't think that looting a pharmacy at a CVS uh, is really going to change anybody's mind about you. No. Well, I'm just saying. Unless you give them some Thank of the drugs. Why is well, that's a temporary a eye. So. Who made this yeah. Pikachu? <laughs> oh, the Pikachu? Catch him. Pokeball. Um, yeah, it was Thank crazy. Thank you, for donating. Thank you. They gave you. everyone in the city a curfew. You couldn't leave the, your house between, hey, between Joanna. 10 p.m. and that? 5 in the morning, or else the cops would pull you Thank over. You the... Joanna rocks. You rock, Joanna. Thank you. Yeah, she does. If it wasn't for Joanna Hammond, I would not be where I am today. She, she enabled some of my biggest, most ambitious shots in the dark, and they were success after success. So, Joanna, honestly... That's incredible. You support absolutely everything that we we even slightly have faith in, and that's. Mm. Honestly, we have to thank you just as Great. much because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be halfway where we are today. If it wasn't for the hosts, you do. Mm -hmm. It's a little I can do, man. I mean, I know my hosts aren't aren't ten billion people. I'm not at that point yet. But as I said to you before, persistence is the key to success. You go on every single night. Or do your thing on routine and people come and find you. There's going to be a lot of people who find you and stay there. And even if they're not talking in chat, like even your chat right now, my chat, some of my most loyal people don't Look. ever say a word. Mm -hmm. They don't say a word. Oh. They show up, they stay, and then they leave. Or they stay in channel. They just leave it up. So when they, 7 o'clock Eastern pops up, they grab their food, they sit down. And I, I've received messages from some of them saying, Thank you for the entertainment. I know I don't talk a lot. I know you probably don't know who I am. And I'm like, I know exactly who you are. I have an hour monitor. I know who spends time in my chat. But I could say some names to some people who are very frequent in my chat, like Joanna and Cranky Kanaka are really frequent in my chat. And I could say, say them a name of somebody who spent just as many hours as they have. Say, do you know this person? They would go, who the hell are you talking about? And I say, they're a lurker. They have spent 1,800 hours streaming hours with us. <laughs> so we started recording it in last February. And uh, they would say, wow. You don't know who's watching right now. There's people that aren't even logged in on Twitch right now that mm -hmm. are watching. Yeah. Tom There's... Cruise is watching you right now. Yeah. Tom Cruise, if you're is. watching, fuck off. Oh, God. <laughs> John, <laughs> oh, he's yeah, that was his... Long. Oh, I'm tweeting that at him. Tweet that at him. I don't give a <laughs> I'm shit. I'm pretty sure if he's you said that, else. Tom Cruise would get his, like... Scientist people, Scientology people okay. to like come I'm after you. The <laughs> if the Scientology people come after me, they will have to board their imaginary spaceship and fly that ass over here if they can fucking find where my country is. <laughs> <laughs> so Eva. Well, we Tom Cruise, they tried to get you in here, buddy. I was going to make you some new friends, but apparently they don't like you very much, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I guess I am not really tweeting this. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to tweet it right at him. Did you hear what they said on Sim Nation TV about you today? Unbelievable. <laughs> TMZ, get up and you guys are going to be huge. Then he goes on to E Entertainment, and somebody in E Entertainment says, I ever need to cover one of these podcasts, I'll quit my job and I'll go fish. You know, I was emotionally yeah. scarred by what they said to me on Sim Nation TV. <laughs> <laughs> emotionally scarred. I'm nice. Like, it's no, just yawn. He, gets upset, like, he starts to stalk yawn, right? Like Tom Cruise, like, I know what you're doing. You're going to change your mind about me. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> All of a sudden, your face is on the front page of every tabloid. And you're like, oh, shit. But as crazy as that sounds, and I know we're being a little off the wall here, that does happen to people. They say something, and it just so happens to be said in front of somebody else, and all of a sudden, they find some random picture of themselves that's completely unflattering on the front page of the New York Times or something, and they're like, 
oh shit. So <laughs> something to put, something to think about. This is gonna be a day. It's gonna be a day. You just gotta be like, be prepared for it. I'm trying to make a face uh, for the tabloid picture. Wait. All right. No, they're gonna find the one that you don't want, where your mouth is wide open and they see all the food you're eating. <laughs> and you... no, yes. they have. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we, we have the here. peanut. We have the popcorn one of Yawn already, and then we have the monkey <laughs> one of me. The monkey one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know which one they're gonna use? They're gonna use the one out of the Welcome to Sim Nation trailer where it's my face as the Sim Sensor mod. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, <laughs> yes, we've got to watch the, the Welcome I to Sim Nation. They were, what were you guys, what were you, they were doing something. I did something. put the sensor off at the damn part. Top 10 mods of The Sims 4. And oh, yeah. there was one. Here's the, the thing uh, Fun <laughs> has one mod that disables the. Uh, the blurring, right? But the problem is, I didn't, I didn't want people to focus on it on the video because it was about something else. But somebody was going in the toilet, so I was like, I need to cover this with a sensor, but I don't want to make one. I'll just use a picture, and I just saw a snapshot of Yana. I was like, yes, I'm using that. Yeah, <laughs> it had That's to, awesome. it like bounced just across her as she was peeing, but. It's not even gross. They leave their Joanna, clothes on. Joanna, our streams are not U.S. times. It's only the podcast that is U.S. times. Our streams are um, 1.30 p.m. till 4 p.m. Well, usually longer. Um, U.K. time. Okay. U.K.? When I stream you know, in made the it? U.S. time. <laughs> when somebody takes an unflattering picture of you and says, use this as something. Like, that's, that's the sign you've made it there, so... There's so many unflattering, unflattering pictures of me on the internet, I don't give a shit anymore. Uh, uh, don't worry. <laughs> Everybody looking at themselves, yeah, I've, I've, how many hours have I streamed, I still look at myself, and I'm looking at myself on Skype right now, and I'm just like, okay. Oh, how many podcasts do we have where we pick the one pose of Jan where he was, got stuck? On camera, and it was like, <laughs> oh, ah! oh my god, <laughs> the we old think, camera. Like, like, we're like, let's all make like, fun of <laughs> We're like, we're like, what's John doing? Let's try to mimic it. <laughs> That's awesome. I used to have the Logitech Pro 9000 camera that, for some bloody reason, would freeze all the time. Like, we would talk for two hours before the podcast, worked perfectly. <laughs> Halfway through the podcast, it was always freeze. And I was always in a pose like, <laughs> and then we were like, okay, wait, five seconds. Ah! Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, now Wait, did she just freeze in that position? Exactly. Oh, she did for a second. That was great. <laughs> that's, Hi, Ron. That's her family. The camera does that now. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Mine, I, used, uh, I bought a new one. C920s, they were. Freezing. Yeah, C920s are amazing. I use one. I have two of them. I have one here, and one is the Pug Cam. Pug Cam. It's really confusing to type pug cam. I don't have. I don't know. No, Fallon, I let you stream whenever if you can be bothered to. Whatever. First yeah, of should... all, first of all, listen. This, first of all, it was okay, Fallon. Me and Jan both have shitty internet, so you stream. I picked a day. I picked. Okay, I'll stream Thursdays. I'm off. Then Jan got a hold of Skylines and went, "Fuck you, bitches." I'm going to stream every day of the week, regardless if my internet's shitey or not. And then it took, it took all the time. So I said, whatever, I'll keep Thursday. But you go ahead and, and stream. Like, you can't stream whenever he streams because you're working or sleeping. Or both, maybe. Exactly. So <laughs> You can stream whenever you want American time because the time I'm streaming, you're asleep. Or working, I'm gonna or both. find a way to get over to that side of the of the of the basement, Jan, during your stream, and scare somebody and pop up like, hi. <laughs> like Outlast stream or like a Slenderman stream, just show up and be like, <laughs> slowly closer, just slowly closer. Did I tell you about that? My Outlast stream. I actually have it on YouTube. Uh, I was doing a scare stream for for the week before Halloween, and every time somebody donates, it screams. And that's part of our, our promotion. I actually got that from Co Carnage. But uh, one of them, I was playing, I believe it was Outlast, and something jumped out, and somebody donated. It screamed. I yelled. She came up, my wife came up behind me, grabbed my shoulder, and scared the crap out of me, and then scootled crapped in the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it was mayhem. <laughs> Have you ever played, uh, what is it, Five Nights at Freddy's? Uh, no. Oh, no, I saw uh, Let's Play, though. 
Black. I wouldn't yeah, play I mean, a if game you watch it, you get it. But like the the first time I played that, I couldn't play it again because I I get it now. But the first time I played that, I I have a clip of me genuinely getting up and running across the room. It was terrifying. <laughs> Once you get it, you it's know, like, you know what works with that game is that thing that you can't just run, dodge, or anything like that. You're stuck there. You're just yeah. waiting for it oh, to yeah. happen. I think part of it is that. I was screaming while we were playing Portal because of freaking yawn. Killing me unexpectedly. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> those were <are crazy. laughs> We played Portal, one of those levels where you have to shoot across the, the, um, the bridge You always beam. have to shoot across everything. <laughs> and I would purposely do it so she would fall down. Oh, Portal. Portal is such a great game. Such a great co-op game. Who's using the the chat? All three of us are yeah. using <laughs> Yeah, no, he'd do it. I'd be like, okay, I'm walking across, and then he'd be like, I'm like, ah! He would do it like a hundred times. I think I almost died during oh, that stream. That's awesome. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's back when we used to play games together. Yeah, now we Jan just need... used to come. We on need a streams. Slenderman portal mod. Oh, oh God, God, no. no. Or, or no, the reverse. A portal mod. Uh, it's a portal, but you have a Slenderman mod. So <laughs> it's like a scary forest, and you have to port your way you through never it. Never Chasing you, <laughs> Love. I would play the crap out of that. I can't. Mm. Uh, you know, oh, that, what's that game? Cry of Fear. I only got to the introduction and I screamed. Uh, so uh, there, I couldn't even play the rest. I was like, I can't jump scare games. Like I'd be like, ah, ah. You know what's a good game? That is, I'm with you on jump scares. Like jump scares, I get it. They jump, ah, uh, whatever. You know, but jump scares are I, what I think are cheap scares. I'm the sort of person that likes genuine atmospheric terror. Building Slender up. Slender the Arrival had that because when you start, you're in the middle of you're getting out of your car and you're walking down into a forest and you can see the sun setting. And I don't know about you guys, but one of the most terrifying things in the world is walking towards away from your safety zone, i.e., your car, into an unknown area like a forest. As it's getting darker. To me, that's the setup for an atmospheric, like, ugh. Yeah. I ugh. have. And that's I an intelligent suffer. scare. I suffer from panic attacks. <laughs> I don't leave my house after 8 p.m. because nice. I live next to a fucking forest. No. Oh, well, but I mean, it's a forest. What's the worst? A wolf's gonna come out and be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Yan is gonna have to wrestle that like wolf the to fox death. The other day. The Cold War. But it's still, you know, it's, it's okay. like whenever you're a kid, you're told, oh, there are no such things as monsters. And you're like, okay. But still, it's dark. And you're like, yeah, but still, you know? I was, that made it I funny had a horrible experience one day. This was back before I was um, in therapy and stuff like that, where my social anxiety was really bad. Mm. I was walking my German Shepherd. And I was listening to a podcast. We're walking on the bottom of the forest. The street light goes podcast. off because they, as they often do, they just die. On the podcast, nice. all of a sudden, they play a sound of a supposed ghost. <laughs> yes, we. I <laughs> never moved so fast in my fucking life. Your dog was probably you like, "Joke, your dog like <laughs> his problem." He was like, "Oh my god, we're running! Wait, we're running! We're jump the shepherd! Why don't you just jump in the back of the German Shepherd and ride home?" Jan's <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> you need like. Yeah, we used to have a German Shepherd, but I don't have it anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't get scared get in real life. I just get scared playing games. That's your family. I can't. I can't play a game if I think that something's around the corner and it's gonna come out and try to kill me. My heart starts racing. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Place oh my god. the arrival. No. <laughs> no. No. I you know, it's not a long game. It's a game. Honestly, people are like, eh, the game's too short. It's not that scary. I thought Slender the Arrival. <laughs> I think that might be the scariest game that I, I played. I played <laughs> Slender the Arrival in broad daylight. No. Oh! Okay, it wasn't broad daylight. It was kind of mid-afternoon. Come on. And I was going... <laughs> dude, th when you're in the house and you have the flashlight and the power's out and you're looking around the house... Dude... I couldn't do that as a kid. Walk around my house mm -hmm. with the lights off. Yeah. Like, my house! Like, that's... There's something just... It, it's just this fear of this unknown. Like, you don't know what's going to happen and what's going to be around the corner. Like, there was this one thing that my mom shared with me when I was a kid, and I think it scarred me. Um, she's like... We were, I don't know why we were talking about what scares us, but she said the scariest thing ever for her was looking out her front window and seeing somebody look back at her. No! 
Yeah. And that scarred. I was like, yeah. So now Windows at night are completely shut and blocked. <laughs> well, I, mean, like, I, I used to have a panic of, you know, the bathroom mirror closing it and having something behind because of those stupid movies. And then oh, I had like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can't Bloody do this. Mary I need to do it. And then I'll see my. No. I know. We did it as kids. Uh, how about deep water? I can't stand no, deep. I, I, deep water I, is the most scariest thing for me. Mm, I mm. I don't have a problem with. Whenever it. you I, don't have your vision, you don't know anything. Like you can see the walls. I don't even go on boats. Y'all are I'm scared like... of real life stuff. I'm scared of fake stuff. <laughs> the only thing that no, scares deep water, deep the water shit is out scary. of me is, is lightning. Lightning scares the bejesus out of me because when yeah. I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was starting to storm. I was about boy. Old, and me and mum went out to I had to grab some stuff from the outside table so it wouldn't get wet. And a lightning, lightning struck just down the road, Oy. like 30 meters away. I'm terrified of it. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I had that happen to me. Uh, Scootaloo was a baby. Like, I would say she was probably eight weeks old. And we were having a real, up in the in northeast U.S., we have these really quick thunderstorms in the summer. It gets really, really hot. Humidity goes way up. Then we have these really violent thunderstorms that last about 10 minutes, and then they're done. Um, and we had one at about 5 o'clock, which is normal, 5 p.m., and it rolled through, and you could hear the lightning coming, and you can hear it, just uh, lightning and thunder, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, you know, we decided to leave the back door open because it's a good thing to get your, your dog or your pet um, – Acquainted with loud noises early on, so they don't freak out or hide or um, bark obsessively to them. It's kind of a training thing. So we left the door open so she could hear the thunder, and you know we're relaxing, her saying "Good girl, good girl" every time it happened, so she understood that it was safe. Um, and all of a sudden, you could feel it in your arms. Your hand, your hair just sticks up. The electricity in the air, and you just see the flash of light, and boom! Struck a car probably twenty feet behind us. And the dog was like, Damn. Ah, turned around and ran across the room. But it was a delayed reaction, like, what do I do? And then she ran across the room. But she's not scared of it now, and she barks at fireworks and stuff. But it was just like, it's never an easy thing to deal with lightning. I've never been, like, had lightning strike near me. But recently, we had, like, this wicked cool lightning storm. It, it looked almost like it hit the ground and then split out and then came up. It was so cool. Every time it hit, it would literally like hit the ground and then it would go. I wonder if it was hitting a tower or something. I have no idea, but it was cool. Oh. <laughs> like one. I don't mind lightning. I don't mind watching lightning. I often sit when I'm at the sea, I sit on my porch and watch as lightning strikes just across the strait, um, which is like two kilometers away. Whenever it gets too close, though, I'm just like, nope, nope, <laughs> nope. I'm going. You feel about fireworks. I don't mind fireworks. I hmm. love fireworks. I love fireworks. I hated them as a kid, though, but I love them now. It's yeah. just just lightning that is close. <laughs> and the problem, I mean, it's really nice. It's really loud. Which has a lightning sure. spire on it, which is I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like away. lightning's all that unreasonable of a fear. Okay, okay, but you know what? You're you're in the open field. She's in a city. That's a big difference. Like anything that sticks out of Earth can be, you know, can have, you know, thunder through it. But yeah, lightning, uh, like, I don't like lightning. Fireworks, I don't give a shit about. Uh, you've like, never had one explode oh, near the yeah. ground. We had New Year's, New Year, mid girls, <laughs> like, we're in celebrating, woo, we go out to watch the fireworks. My neighbor has one of those batteries, you know, where like f- f- 15 shoot out one after the other. Yeah. Uh, they positioned it badly. <laughs> oh, it fell over. Did you I could just see behind their house going poof. <laughs> yep. Shit. Was it because of fireworks? We didn't have fireworks this year. Um, no, but... he said, did your house <laughs> catch wonder... on fire? <laughs> no. Because it was my neighbor's house. I don't give a fuck about my neighbors. Wow. <laughs> so if everyone was then you'd be like, ah, lol. Yeah, I'd be like, we were, hallelujah. We were sitting we were standing on our balcony just going. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Jan is the Antichrist. Oh, okay. And a, uh, a friend when I was a kid who liked firecrackers. And he decided one day, he's no longer my friend. I just want to put that out there. Uh, decided one day to light about four of them and throw them in the air. 
And I'm sitting yeah. there going. So my instinct is run. So I ran. I ran right into the trajectory of a firework. <laughs> it exploded next to my ear. And I have like uh, it, not a lot of hearing loss. I had about an 80% hearing loss and it, it gradually got better. I think I have a permanent 10% hearing loss in my left ear and I have problems with it. Like right now, I it's clogged. I can't hear out of it because I get the seasonal crap in it now. But yeah. But I, I didn't Damn. know fireworks. I, 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 should have been... I love fireworks. Okay, I see why fire. now. <laughs> yeah, I never got hit by one. That's different. It wasn't so much that I got hit by it because I, I, I don't remember feeling the heat. Yeah, of course you did, too. but... It was close enough where it, <laughs> it caused close some ear damage. Enough. I yeah, I fun. don't like firecrackers because my mom works in the burns unit. And I saw uh, so uh, many injuries uh, from them. I thought you were going to say she worked at a firework factory. You ever see a firework factory explode? You want to see a YouTube video that will change your life? I have oh. seen, I think, about the, the guy who took that video, not to be morbid, but the guy who took that video, the one I'm thinking of in the town, he died during that video. Like, that's how big that ex that ending explosion was. The payload yeah. exploded at the end of the video. You just see boom and fire. Mm -hmm. I don't know about neat, but it's it's impressive. You hear something it's weird? entertaining until you see the big ball of fire engulf him. Yeah, it's quite crazy hearing what's the equivalent of a thousand grand finales going off at the same time. But yeah, I do, I do enjoy watching fireworks still in the sky. It's very pretty. Oh yeah, cool. well, fireworks in in the sky. In the away sky, from houses, away from yes, me. that's where they belong. It's fine. Now here, here, my my sister has like the weirdest thing in her house. So, um, she she has like um. They, they bought this, this place and, you know, they built, like, a second floor, right? So they get to sleep on, on the second floor now. Uh, and on the bottom, you know, they, um, they have the kitchen in the same place it was before, but they have now a dining room and so on. And, um, okay, so there used to be, uh, the, the house was from, uh, I mean, they actually got it because the, the old lady who was living there died. So that's how they actually got the opportunity to buy it. And, of course, as you would guess, it was downstairs, the, uh, the bedroom. And so at night, every time, they would hear steps, and they can't locate where the steps are coming from. But they're just coming from <laughs> the bottom floor, and the uh, the um, the what do you call it? The microwave just starts automatically, and they send it check like twice already, and they don't know why. They just it just turns on, it starts to work, and they have to go down and stop it. <laughs> and they keep hearing these steps, and they don't know why, and they're just coming from the bottom floor. Oh my god! I'm like, won't you just move out? <laughs> uh, so, there's nothing out there walking around that you can't see. It, it's it's stuff really we don't need because it, it, it needs to be something physical to make sounds, right? But it's yeah, but like, I don't think if, the afterlife needs hot pockets. Yeah, I mean, because if you're like, well, if it's a ghost, well, a ghost technically doesn't have mass, so it can produce sounds, and there we go. But I mean, even if you do all the logical reasoning, you're like, yeah, but I hear the the, the walks, and I'm I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I look I look at ghosts logically because if ghosts were real during the course of human history on Earth. There has been we should have almost a hundred billion individuals. Yeah, I saw that stat kids. too. There'd be a hundred billion ghosts walking around right now. I ah! think you'd see one. Yeah. Yes. Like plus, for example, the person plus, above me is a ghost right now. Plus, so you know, uh, all the all the you know the cats, nine, nine, dogs, nine, and other animals. Nine 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 percent of people are dead. Ow. Yeah. Well, I so have if these, you think uh, about it, where are they? <laughs> these girls at work, um, they they've said that they have like a ghost kind of in their house or like that they have felt like uh, the ghost of this one particular dead person that they know is like in their house. I've never had anything ghostly uh, related happen to me. Were you, were you not like Kesha <laughs> where you had sex with a ghost? Why? I don't Ooh. know. What is this? No. But she, she was, Kesha was that. very adamant on an interview that a ghost touched her in her sleep. And you know what? You're talking about it. That's called marketing. I know. But that was that was her thing. I was like, yeah. <gasps> well, no, I, I'm just saying. But, but, but the, here's, here, all right, here's the thing. Uh, by the, the way, I, I have an explanation for your microwave turning on 
person walking thing. That's very easy to explain what was happening there. Either somebody was trolling them or <laughs> electricity sometimes when it has a short will make a clicking noise. Yes. Oh, no. I mean, no, sorry. The microwave is running. Yeah, no, but I mean, the electricity short might have caused the microwave to turn on. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm sure there is an explanation, but that's just what they deal with every day since like the past years. That sounds like a <laughs> short. It sounds like an old electrical system that somebody hasn't bothered to fix. Dizzy, when a ghost yeah. touches you in your sleep, it, it, there's okay, usually an explanation. You're going to uh, be a believer. To that thing. Well, if they actually had a little experience. In my sleep, I will say, thank you, finally, some. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come to America, we'll get you laid. But anyway, I was like, this guy's from this guy's from Russia. Yes, he fought in the war. Like, we'll we'll really play it up for you. About that. Somebody, somebody's <laughs> from Russia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just pretend. But anyway, no. Um, when it comes, God, I forgot what I was talking about. Whatever. Something ghost about touching ghost you in marketing. your sleep. Oh, yeah. I, well, I had an experience where there was this newspaper article. And this is proof that a lot of this ghost stuff is in our heads. And it, for a while, this scared me. But then I kind of came to realize what it was. Um, mm -hmm. There was this newspaper article that my mom had left on the kitchen counter about some lady that she knew that had passed away. And I, and I know this is going to sound heartless as hell, but hear me out while I say this. I don't know why I did this. So yeah, I saw this article. I, I think we've established it. <laughs> you have Jan right next to you. Article, and I'm like, oh, who the hell is this person? I have no idea who this person is. Like, I don't know why I was so adamant about, like, why does she have this out? This is somebody that was obviously important to her, and she had this article out. But I, I was, I must have been 17, and I was like, why is this on the counter? And I kind of just pushed it aside and didn't think anything of it. Uh, that night, I was asleep, and I wasn't feeling too well, and I, I went to bed. And I was laying down and I, I felt my, my stepdad was out of town. So my mom, you know, my mom didn't have anybody to, to get to assist with things. So I was helping out and I was 17. So it was like reluctance. So I'm laying down and I'm sitting there or I'm, I'm laying down. I don't know why I said I'm sitting there. I'm laying there and I feel somebody, you know, tapping my feet. And I think it's my mom in the middle of the night for some reason. She, I guess, had done it the night before because there was an owl outside. And if you've ever heard an owl... They sound a little creepy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do you want? What do you want? And I didn't get up and it happened again. So I sat up and I wear contacts and I can only see about this far in front of my face without my contacts in. So I'm looking around and I see her standing in the corner there and I'm like, what do you want? So I put my contacts in and I look and there's nobody there. <laughs> so I got up, I turned on the light and I didn't go back to bed. And for the longest time, I'm like, why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did it happen? And the thing was, I had it in this image in my head, I guess, like this thought of when I had said that thing about that newspaper article that was sitting on the counter, and it kind of popped up yeah. back in my head at a random moment that I just so happened to be abruptly woken up by somebody in the middle of the night, and I made that kind of connection there. But, I mean, what caused me to wake up so dramatically? I don't know. It's, no, you're, it's, pro you're probably your, your head was still thinking about it, like uh, on the subconscious. You were like maybe, maybe guilt or something. Ghost touched you. Plus, there's there's also yeah. the thing that our brains are programmed to detect faces and figures. Yeah. Also, you see so faces everywhere when you see well. sometimes, you, know, you, sometimes see. you look at something and it looks like a shadow, but sort of looks like a face or it's a ghost. stuff like I, that. That's yeah. I had a, I had a picture I took at a cemetery <laughs> once. My I don't know if you guys know who the Warrens are. You familiar with who the Warrens are? Do you ever hear of Amityville Horror? Yeah. Yeah. Amityville Horror was investigated by a ghost ghost couple, and they're uh, the Warrens. They actually are from Connecticut. Uh, I I went to high school probably two minutes from their house, and they investigate this sort of stuff. They actually have seminars. Um, Ed Warren actually passed away not so long ago, but Lorraine, his wife. Uh, does the seminar still and they're ghost seminars and they actually worked like i said at amityville horror and there's a, a movie out right now that has to do with poltergeist and it's about a raggedy ann doll that was possessed and they actually have that in their house oh, like nice. in, like a glass like it's based on a true story as far as that goes but they um there's some really great stuff when it comes to sort of paranormal stuff that'll really like see i'm into the atmospheric horror horror like uh, when it comes to jump scares, that's an easy scare. You can get to anybody. But when you say, you know, you're walking somewhere and it's like the atmosphere is all scary and everything. So if you you're want, like, terrified. huh? 
when you're actually terrified, you know? Like, yeah, you, you, I mean, am I the only one who feels that way? That, like, that's, like, genuinely the scariest stuff on Earth when they, they make the, the actual... Actual... Oh, yeah. yeah. If, if I'm watching something... That's the true one. Like, or reading something that kind of sets the atmosphere is terrifying, then, yeah, that's terrifying. Jump scares, mm. They're easier, technically, because they're like, bam, there you go. Yeah. Right? Ah, like, setting up an atmosphere, like, really creeping into somebody's head... Not scared. And have you like then leave the room and still be scared about it? That not, then you're doing it well. <laughs> did you guys ever see the movie Signs? Yeah. No. I mm. did. That was so like mm. a horrible twist. You didn't like oh, what a twist. Okay, but give me this. Give me this. And the r part where he walks in his daughter's room and she goes, "There's a man on a roof outside. Can I have a glass of water?" And he goes, oh, well, whatever. He's kid just talking. He looks out the window, and he sees somebody looking back at him standing on top of the, the barn roof. That was terrifying to me. Or when he runs around the house trying to find out who it is, and they jump on the roof and run away. To me, that's terrifying. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. The see, end sucks. I though. don't get, like, movies. <laughs> see, stuff that should be scary in movies doesn't really scare me. I only really get scared when I'm not expecting something and it don't. I get scared, like, in real life. If I'm walking around the corner and I don't expect you to be there and you pop around the corner, I'm like, ah! How about you're in your living room, sitting thought, there doing whatever, thought, yeah. and you hear somebody walking yeah. on your roof? Uh, I would think that would be my, my fat-ass cat, but... <laughs> well, really? That wouldn't scare you? Wow. In in my case, make my case, I would be thinking, oh, it's it's a squirrel or something. It's See, I'm in an apartment building, so now it doesn't bother me. But when uh, I was in my case, I'd assume that I'm about to rob me, so it's just close things. <laughs> well, I always hear normal. footsteps, anyways, <laughs> because I have a cat. <laughs> I'm hearing. For me, every time I hear a weird noise, it's somebody trying to rob somebody else. That that's Probably. that's just what I think. There, there, there. The time there was like a lot of noises, like gla glasses breaking. I was like, I shut down the. The, the, the windows, I think. My, my parents called the police. That's it. Yeah. One thing when you hear him walking, you don't know what the purpose is. So you can kind of... Yeah. yeah, well, I guess because we're so scared that we're going to get robbed here that we just assume it. So because we have a reason of the, the walking, we don't get scared, which is no. Right? Yeah, here, oh, I, here just I just assume, assume it's... I guess not knowing is the worst part. Just running on my yeah, but somebody's coming in your house with the intent to do something that's not pleasurable. That's not fun either. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. I mean, I've been what robbed before, so I'm getting used to the idea. Not to rip a security system or anything, but what do you do? Keep a katana under your bed? I have a dagger. No. <laughs> Pretty screw. I mean, uh, I have like, uh, well, we have a few layers of protection, however. They would have yeah. to break. We have like I'm, shells and we have the. Uh, Pablo has I may have just revealed mine. Outside that no, I mean, it would, like, literally, <laughs> our house is well protected. But you gotta do that in the main cities in Argentina. I'm talking about Argentina. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's different. Ever had a gun pointed at your chest? It's not funny. <laughs> yeah, I did once. Although I was making jokes and my friend didn't take it that well because I was with a friend. <laughs> and I was making jokes like, shut up. And like, what do you want, want me to do? He already has a gun in my chest. <laughs> it's pretty much settled. Whatever I do, that's it. You know. Yeah, at that and point, it's just like. Yeah, no like way. that's it. And I remember we were like uh, at the police station, you know, telling the story. Uh, oh, I remember like they told me to call my mom. I was like underage, and uh, and I was like, just call my mom. I was like, what happened? Uh, well, I just you told me to call your mom. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, somebody had to pick me up because I was underage. So I was in the police station, right? I, oh, because we went to one. And uh, we sort of took a tour around, and you were like, yeah, we don't recognize anybody. I don't know. <laughs> so Salen was telling you to call your mom. <laughs> call your mom right now! <laughs> <laughs> no, tell you, lover! So, yeah, so we were there in the, the police station, and uh, yeah, yeah um, he's like, uh, okay, what's your home number? This, all right. Yeah, I'm calling him. Um, I don't know, sheriff. I don't know what the, the word in English for this. So I'm just going to say sheriff. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, your son has been assaulted. Yeah, I'm going to give it to him now okay so i pick up and like what happened oh um i was with you know him uh, we got we got robbed and she's like why i'm like i don't know they're mean people i have no <laughs> idea and the, the the sheriff started to laugh and i was like, <laughs> like what do you want me to do but i i i, I guess you kind of i don't know you, you get used to it 
Stop flaunting yourself <laughs> outside, Pablo. <laughs> Without revealing what I do for a living, I don't think you ever get used to it. I've had a couple of yeah, I mean, it's it's no, you know what don't... what's the horrible thing? Like people get used to like an example. Whenever I went to the U.S., I was in San Francisco. People like I would see a, a kid running around with an iPad filming stuff, and I was like, "This kid is gonna get kidnapped like now." But nothing would happen because <laughs> we were in California. We weren't here. Right, but in here you see women taking the purse on the other side of the street because that's where you got to do. Otherwise, a motorbike will go, go by and take it away from Jesus. you. Like you already have, you already have all these rules, and you just live with it because you get used to it because nothing changes, and you yeah, sort of that. adapt. And it's not good because then people not think survival. This is yeah, that's, that's boring, why I'm making the survival game, but in nature. <laughs> Like there's a lot of American kids who are loudmouth and they say things just to sake to say it. And I'm like, you. It helps to put things in perspective. I mean, I could walk outside of my house right now. I know the roads down there are going to be safe. They're going to be paved. I know I'm going to have water at my faucet. My electricity's on. My phones are on. My internet is on. I know if I want to get a nice thing of fast food. It's available. <laughs> like these little things that we take for granted, like that some people like, I don't know. I just like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Let me put it this way. Uh, whenever I go for a walk on, on the afternoon, I don't take my phone with me because chances are I'm going to get robbed. It's stupid I, to take my phone six outside. Not. Okay, oh, but man. I can do that. I need, to, I need to know I'm going to be on a transport because the chances are fairly high. Because I'm one of the major cities, let's not forget, if I'm like in a very yeah. small town, I can do this, but if I'm in a big city, you know, because you know things are so not well, so yeah, I, I don't take my phone it, always. It depends. I, I I think it really depends where you live because I used yeah. to live in our capital, quite in the center of the capital, and every day I would go for a run, and that would yeah. mean I had my headphones in and held my phone in my hand and just ran. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I would find it weird if I left my phone somewhere. I would be like, where the fuck is it? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's my three things. My keys, my wallet, my phone. Exactly. Yeah, I that's wish I could take it can't... anywhere. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Uh, on on you California... Do if, you somebody, if you're in an emergency. Yeah, well, here's, here's the thing. Yeah, well, I mean, yes. You sort of have to, like, well, better that than just losing your phone, right? Because... This, I cannot buy it here. I had to like ask, ask my parents to bring it for me whenever they were on vacations. But that's because we're having like a crappy government. Uh, but no, no less. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. When I was in California, and I remember I was like with my luggage, right? Because I was using Airbnb, and the guy like would only let me go into his, like he would come back from work like 5, 6 p.m. So I had to like just spend my day in downtown San Francisco until... Um, he would go back and I would go in and be able to leave my stuff. So I was just walking around. And I go by and I don't mean to be racist, but this is something you have to do in Argentina. You look at the guy's face. If it feels like uh, it doesn't have many resources, you better run, right? Uh, because you know that person is, is very highly that's going to come at you and you're going to lose your that's stuff. So that's just, you, you got to be sort of racist in your head if you want to survive. It's, it's very horrible. But I, the first time I got robbed, I got robbed because I didn't do it. I was like, I don't want to make this guy feel bad because he looks like he would rob me and what happened, I got robbed. So, yeah, you know, and so I went through this, this area. A lot of people, like clearly uh, Afro-American people, I'm going to say it, okay? Um, I'm not being racist again, but I was going by it. And I was getting really nervous because I had all my stuff, my computer, everything on my luggage. I was walking right in front of them. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so so many of them. There's nobody on the street. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. And I just went by them. Nobody even talked to me. They didn't even care I was there. It's the thing, man. But it was in my head, you know? And I don't right. mean to be racist, but in that situation, no, I was like, oh, my God. You're basically yeah. discussing where the root of that stems from. I mean, that's, that's human yeah. beings, yeah. man. I mean, they, but it's, it's, in this it's case, it's survival. Putting race into it. Maybe some old guy, every time, you know, maybe an old guy robbed you. And every time you see an old person, you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, oh. oh. Crap. It's just, you know, it's survival instincts. It's not something, you know, it's... It, it's uh, unfortunate. Because then many fall into that classification, you know, without... Well, people take it to the next level, and that's where it gets bad. And when you take it to the point of when you're, you're jeopardizing people's well-being because of it, exclusively because of it, yeah. then we're, you know, then I get to where it gets bad. But, I mean, I, 
hey, we all live in our own heads. There's a lot of things that we we have going through our heads that we don't outright say that we need to do to survive. And for people to say that they are 100% pure in every thought that they have and they don't have judgments of people, I'm I call bullshit. I'm 100% pure yeah. and – no, just kidding. Uh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, everybody's got their own opinions on things. It's it's what you do as a result of those opinions that makes the world what it is. So, yeah, that's the way I look at it. Today we had some nice deep talk. Nice deep talk here. We we did. Hours. Nice. Oh my god, I got an hour to my cat. What am I gonna do? Didn't even play cards against humanity. I know. Yeah, we're gonna do that sometime. Monday, yeah, one day. Um, well, Mondays. Mondays you got me, so I was actually supposed to do some filming today, so I don't Oops. know about next Monday. That's okay. I I have a uh, a secret project I'm working on. I've told no one about it, so. Damn. I have Sorry, guys. But yeah, we'll, we'll catch you another Monday. Mondays, Mondays, Mondays are good yeah. for all of us. For now, while I have this job, Mondays are off, so. That's cool. I mean, do you guys want to wrap it up? I don't know. It's kind of late. I don't know. I th- well, Dizzy has what? You have your stream in an hour. Yep. I already got dinner next uh, to me, so. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. But he, he may need some time to actually eat and rest his boys. So yeah. I'm playing Smite tonight, so it's just going to be me talking smack to everybody. Oh, yeah. Which is like- always hilarious. <laughs> I got a nice new playlist up. And... Sweet. It'll be a good time tonight. Sweet. <laughs> <coughs> Too enthusiastic. This, this, you ever seen this? He's drinking grass oh, water. God, it's a, it's a, what is it? Rock, rock water. Grass water. Rock, they call it rock water, and it's not rock water. Because it sounds like rock, rock water. Drink no, it's, ba- it's tea, basically. Oh, it's basically. Mate. They drink grass water. It's mate. We all we'll drink it here. It sounds like rocks when it gets to the bottom of it. You actually <laughs> see people on the streets with this. Like downtown, you see people with this. Wow. I'm drinking Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah. I Don't was my coffee drinking for today. It's midnight. That's a coffee? Grape juice. It's an iced coffee. Oh. It's, uh. Pablo's like, you put ice in your coffee? <laughs> raspberry. Yeah, that's all. Listen, I, I, it's not about how it tastes, it's about how quickly you can get it in. So. <laughs> Take that. What I, well. That's when not I was just in Europe, I tasted one of the best iced teas ever. That's the thing. Here in Europe, we have coffee slowly. Mm. I got that, that thing American right. coffee right. sucks. People in the U.S. T- t- take like very big coffees. That, that's all. Like in here, yeah. it's like this small. Look at this. Like it's this huge. Small. Very big. Yeah, but actually, in Starbucks, we have you know what happened in Starbucks movie. here? They had to make like a tiny version because people wouldn't like. Many would go in and like, no, I want a regular cup. Of, no, this is the smallest one. The smallest one is really big. <laughs> What's your work week like in Europe? Well, how many hours a week do you work? Forty. Okay, so you do work forty. There's this common misconception in America that you work thirty. No, we work forty. Mm, okay, so <laughs> no, you're just probably really more apt to take I your work vacation more. and and get paid more than we do. I have I have by law I have thirty days of vacation per year. Oh, you get the <laughs> per year. You have and twenty, but I've been working there for nine years. I have thirty, and 30. Uh, that does not count. Um, sick days. Sick days. Oh. You know how much. Plus, you know, universal health care, free education. Up yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that sort of stuff we can go round and round about, but that comes down to population size. I get zero Every- vacation. Oh, uh, well, hey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we, can't, you- we can't work. We can't work over forty hours a week. Yeah, it's kind of. So I mean, I, I I work closer to fifty, but that counts my commute. So. Well, with me, it's. 40 plus overtime. Mm. I usually have about 10 to 15 mm. minutes of overtime. When I worked at the bank, I only got max of three weeks vacation. And one week you had to take a whole week. Yeah, that's time. what I'm dealing with. I well, get a max. Forget, like, the US is like um, pretty much the most capitalist uh, <laughs> country in oh, the world. We have body so, capitalism. Everything's about money. Yeah. Plus, like, you guys, you guys, I, I, I always find it weird because you guys just get paid either weekly or bi-weekly, which to me is such a fucking foreign concept. 
Really? What do you get paid? Monthly. Wait. Once a month. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, what? You get paid <laughs> weekly or bi weekly? Yeah. Yes. yes. How? Why? Is it monthly? Mean, like every uh, monthly? Oh my god, I'd be screwed. I get paid <laughs> every 18th. When I worked at the yeah, bank, we did have oh, okay. this, some people that I would mean, get paid once a month, but you get, I mean, you get like your whole big $2,100 check or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, my, my actual job, I get paid every other Friday. But they, I mean, it's all direct deposit and everything. And I, you know, I do, I, I do all my, my bills on the 10th of the month. Like, that's something I do. So if I did get paid monthly, it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me anymore, I guess. But, like, when it comes to, like, the Twitch stuff, because we, we get royalty checks from Twitch, yes, for being a part. <laughs> Which are, you know, not what people think they are, but we get that once cents. a month. No. Yeah. yeah. It has to be over a certain amount, so they pay. I'm and I'm fortunately over that certain amount. But it's the same with YouTube. It's yeah, over seven. I get paid yeah. weekly every every YouTube Friday. YouTube is hundred, right? Like AdSense, hundred a month. Yep. Do you guys are you part of a network? No. No. I I was, but I I kind of left it because I got to find a better deal. <laughs> so, oh. but my YouTube's kind of. We uh, we got an offer like um like a lot like no. not now but you used to get like so many offers before. From like, yeah. they would have like three channels with five freedom, each. Yeah. Which freedom is interesting. Hmm? But uh, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I always found it weird that you guys get paid either weekly or bi-weekly. That to me is such a foreign concept. Because we it's need more our money and we need our money now. <laughs> I, well, the thing is, we've, we've grown up to be... You know why that is, right? And budgeting. That so often? Is, because it, it's a capitalist it's philosophy. Good. It's impulse oh, yeah. buy. Take it, in, take it, spend it. You got right? the money. Now you can spend it. Give them the money quicker, they spend it quicker. Yeah. It's all capitalist, but man. Hit it, hit it's monthly. So we all know how to budget. <laughs> like everything is named after a corporation here. Everything. Like the amount of commercials that we have on television. Like if I want to go to, um, like say a hockey game, like the, the arena in, in, in Boston, for example, is the TD Bank Arena. I mean, the only one I, I'm a Rangers fan, and that's called Madison Square Garden, but that's been called that forever. But I mean, a lot of different everything's everything's money around here. Absolutely everything. If you're gonna pitch something and you can find some way that it makes you money, do it. And that's why streaming, for example, what I'm doing prior to me being partnered, it, it's kind of like, oh, you're playing video games for people, great. But now that you actually <laughs> Having your face on money and you're raising money for people and you're you're making even if it's like a little bit like where we are, you you're justifying what you're doing and you're not getting paid like I don't I, I don't want to sit here and be like yes I'm doing four hours a night and I'm making forty thousand dollars an hour. Some people are I'm not but you have to work to that point. But if you can say that there's a quantified value to your time then people are interested. They're listening. They're watching. So that's, that's, that's America. Every step is money. And you have to be smart on calculating. Like, for example, we're going to have to talk about how much you guys are paying me when we're done with this because I spent all this time here. If you make 40000 an hour, can you adopt me as, like, your sister? And then we can... Adopt as a sister? I'm like, I'm, like, a little bit lower than you. Like, I'm, like, East Coast... I'd be your East Coast sister. You know, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Have the time zone with me. Yes. No, no forty thousand dollars an hour here. I'd be happy if I made that in a year from streaming because then I could justify actually doing it for a living. But hi. I'd be happy if I made that in a year. This would be twice as much as I made it a year. Oh, that would be glorious. Like people are hearing that and they're like, I don't know if I would survive, dude. I would any day of the week, any day of the week. So, I could I, pay double my bills every month and I'd still have cash left over. I'd be like, cost of living here is I'd be like, oh, yes. <laughs> hello, hello, look at my rich ass. Well, if we keep getting rioting, maybe the cost of living will go down and then I'll be able to afford something. <laughs> 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 What's my shitty waitress? No vacation, no sick time, no paid time off job that I have. Uh, <laughs> hey, we all had to start somewhere. You know, just know your own value. And sell yourself as that. You'll be fine. Pablo doesn't make enough money to buy any of my photographs. Neither does Jan. What photographs? I'm a photographer. Maybe, maybe oh, they yes. just don't want them and they're saying they don't make I enough know. money. No one they're bluff on that? 
no make them feel guilt. Me. Guilt is the best way to sell something to somebody. <laughs> you know, a dollar in Argentina, you, you can buy a house, a dog, you can buy a woman. I mean, come on. Because I can be like, you know, my channel offers a lot of really good benefits, and we really would love to have you over here. We offer the information for free, but you know, you know, we would really appreciate it if you can, you know. Sub to the channel. I'm sorry you can't guilt us into this because we're already subbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you are a fine patron of our establishment. Yes, it's because of people like you that we're able to do this every day. Yes. Right. No. I mean, but that's, that's, that's capitalism, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it works. That's how I made five bucks the other day. <laughs> Jan will sing on stream if you donate he, he, you money. You sing J Justin Bieber, you can follow someone, yeah. someone in chat was really, because we were singing in chat, they were like putting out lyrics and I was just singing them. And someone was really adamant about me singing Justin Bieber, like really, really adamant. And I was like, I'm not fucking singing Justin Bieber unless you donate the minimum of five bucks. So he went and donated what? five bucks. Do you want to know the truth? Like, you were talking about that story, and I was talking about Smite, and you said, you know what, I'm going to go spend some time watching Dizzy play Smite, and someday I'll play it, and I was talking about the God Pack, and you're like, yeah, that's something I want to look forward to in the future and everything, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make a $30 donation toward him so he can get a God Pack. You didn't even get it! There you go! But even, I mean, it was a $30 donation toward you, you would have to want with it, but you got a donation out of me because you mentioned that, see? D -d 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 that's how it works. Trust me, as the head of merchandise for a company, I am good at getting money out of people. There you go. And you didn't even expect that. Like, it was completely unexpected. So I was just like, yes. I, I was, because I was looking, I was watching you play Smite, and I was like, this looks kind of cool. I'm not into MOBAs. I'll give it a shot. It's very affordable. It's the most affordable MOBA on the market. And, it, and it's, I think, the best. But I'm a little biased. <laughs> I've only played one MOBA so far. And it's free on Steam. It's Infinite Crisis. It's free. But I like being... Oh my, I had to mention that I was singing because they put lyrics in chat. Now the chat is being filled with lyrics. Living in a lonely Speak. world? Just a hometown yeah. girl? Just <laughs> a small town girl. Living in a lonely world. <laughs> now lurkers you're five bucks. Way to go, lurkers. <laughs> you got the lurkers singing. <laughs> oh my god, I have a ghost microwave. Oh, no, wait. My wife's, wife's home. Ah, <laughs> uh, Unagi. Yeah, see? I, I, I did what they call it's throwback. Cat. <laughs> it's not a ghost. It's Garfield. It could be, except for she's dark. Garfield. And Garfield Do you feed it orange. lasagna? No. My, <laughs> my mom tries to feed my cat chicken, but <laughs> that doesn't work. Well, in moderation. You didn't mind it earlier in the afternoon stream. So don't complain. Yeah, Jan will sing regardless, <laughs> and just the songs he likes. Heroes of the you know, is best with Dizzy. I now have that thanks to thanks to one of Dizzy's people. In the now have what? Uh, Heroes of the Storm. Oh yeah, Heroes of the Storm. If any of you need a copy of it, let me know. I have ten billion keys for it. But um, <laughs> speaking of singing, I and I'll, I'll do a throwback to the Saint Jude donation drive that we were talking about earlier. Um, when we were at Saint Jude Play Live, we actually for one of the nights. I was with a bunch of really big casters there. Uh, Elheim was there. Man vs. Game was there. Zombie Unicorn, to name a few. I don't know if you individually know who they are, but some people in your chat definitely do. Um, and one of the things they did was karaoke. So I have a video of a lot of people singing karaoke, and I don't actually have their permission to show it, but <laughs> your truly did two songs. Oh. Huh. Wait, do we have footage of that? Our <laughs> first goal on Jude, I'm going to release them. So, so you're going to sing yeah. right now? No. I sang there. I sang <laughs> Phil Collins and Tears <laughs> for Fears. A duet with Jan. It was uh, Phil Collins, Tonight, 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 and Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Of course you want so. to sing with Jan. I, I, I sang so what many things singing? today. I don't know. It's already 6.15. <laughs> like, like a half hour. What are we singing? It's 15 minutes past midnight. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you want. Now they're complaining about... My mustache has been there since forever. Since forever. <laughs> he was born with that mustache. He was born. He used to be just a mustache. <laughs> a mustache. I was born. Everyone was born Maybe out of he was mustache. born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> See now? He's demanding that you see. Beautiful. Cover girl. 
Oh wait. Oh you oh you gotta watch the uh the caps. It'll it'll it's You know what's crazy? The power of marketing that I was able to say that and you knew exactly what I was talking about. That Maybelline. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? And you're on the other side of the planet. Oh my god, I want that market power. <laughs> oh Jan, do you prefer Swedish, Finnish, and Norwegian girls? Uh yeah. Zagreb Duronik, you clearly have not met me. <laughs> Dude, I need to come up with a catchy tune like that. All the tunes of oh, Are you dizzy? Maybe it's a disaster. Yeah, I gotta work on it. Find a um a jingle writer. That's money though. Just lie to oh, him. Yeah. Find one Marketing. that's not so. famous yet. <laughs> Checks in the mail, bro. Yeah, that, that, that is my thing to side. They, they were smart. The first thing they did was invest in the banking industry, so everything's automatic and electronic now. There's no more checks in the mail excuses. That doesn't work anymore. Right. So. But I could give you my Hello Kitty check. Shut up, is there? Oh. <laughs> you still you still get a check? I know. I have. Well, I have a checkbook. I can write you a Hello Kitty check if you like. They're so cute. Oh God. I get a check from Twitch, but that's by I I ask them for a check because that I need for my taxes. Like <laughs> at least I could say right here, you know, but. For regular work, I get a direct deposit. I had the most horrible experience with the American IRS <laughs> in living history. You're not American. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Everybody has a horrible experience with the American IRS. I spent 10 hours on an international call to How get that cost, yeah. a freaking American tax number. Why? Why? Because I needed an American tax number to publish the book. And I couldn't do that unless I had to go through a jillion channels through the IRS. Because the IRS is so great. And I finally oh. get to the person and he's like, do you have the form filled out in front of you? And I was like, no, what the fuck am I going to do with a filled form? Dude, tax day is the most ridiculous day on the planet. I mean, you're sitting there in front. We actually got a CPA this year and it was the best thing we ever did. Talking to somebody who understands the tax law because God help me. I do not. And I did my taxes myself for many years. But this year, you know, there's the Twitch stuff. So I was like, what do we do for this? Well, he was like, what did you spend on this? And I said, well, this amount. He goes, okay, well, that's a write-off. He was like, what did you do for this? And I was like, oh, this. He goes, okay, well, that's a write-off. And they actually figure out ways to make it so you don't have to pay a huge tax penalty. And they saved me a lot of money this year. But so we didn't have to pay as much as we thought. But Everything's taxed. Absolutely every imaginable thing on the planet is taxed, and you have to account for it. Or they'll send somebody over to do that for you, and you don't want them to do that. Oh. I got mad when uh, my one I knew, system. I know this one guy in England. He said, as long as you work for a company, they do your taxes for you. Ugh. I haven't done taxes in three years. Oh. Uh, I, I, like, I like to highlight this coming from the chat. Also, no need to be rude, but who is the fourth person? I'm sorry I've never seen you, Mario Cap guy, but you look <laughs> hang beautiful. On, hang on. They, they might not recognize me. Hang on. Hang on. You recognize me now? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. I wore the you so it much, though. When, yeah, when Pablo was reading. Oh, God. They said you look beautiful, Dizzy. And are you oh, in the basement yes. with Jan and I? <laughs> yes. I'm, oh, I'm, that is true. Did Paolo so, capture you also and put you in a dungeon like Paolo and Jan? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm forced to do this. They can put you, a green screen you behind you not so see that behind. there's still construction work going on behind so it looks like we're at three different rooms? Yeah, <laughs> I, I sort of ran out of decoration so I just put like a green blanket and that's it. Cause, you, know, you see those I, targets I, behind Jan? That's where we take shots at him. We throw knives right. at him, try to hit those targets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so good at throwing, though, so you That's might want to throw in a duck. <laughs> I'm not either. That's why I have the big screen in front of me, so I can just go. Yep. <laughs> you see, you, you can't see the, the knife holes because there's two just far away, so it's out of focus, but it's like... I can't pull Dude, them off. There's actually holes in them. I throw knives like an internet streamer throws knives, so you can bet how that's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so oh, they're not... Yeah! Don't you play any like FPS? You should have like your knife throwing skill down. The enemy uh, cannot. Dizzy, button. apparently your Dizzy wife paid it. us to take you off her hands. Did she? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. she could afford it. <laughs> Can you hear her typing behind the green screen over there? Type, 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 type. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, this is actually oh, from a TV show. I used to work on. Oh, you don't hear that, do you? What? 
gunshots? It's a siren. Are you under fire? Last time. Oh, I remember once I was playing Guild Wars and there were <laughs> there were shots and I was like, is this the game? Shit, it's not the game. And they were like, uh, I wouldn't be playing the game if there were shots. I'll tell you how. Who's the guy standing behind you in your window? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Slender Man. Nice to see you again. Hi. One time <laughs> <travel>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a white piece of paper on your wall. That's just me. I'm too white, all right? <laughs> yeah. You're glowing. No, it's glowing. Nice. I actually, Fallon is whiter than me. She's His black. wife I is it. Like, I am whiter than you. I'm whiter than everyone. Yeah, I'm not you're even black. white. You're, you're, you're black and you're white. I'm not people. even white. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the most satisfying thing ever. We are God in SimCity 4. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> oh, you're gonna eat that, huh? You're gonna eat it. I see. What? Nothing. Okay. And now she is tossing that salad with her... Stop sticking your finger in your ear! All right, she's tossing the salad with her earwax. It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it doesn't really well. Okay. Oh, they're coming for you, I, Pablo! Shit, Run! Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. These road trips, man, are killing me. Anyway, let me know whenever we are recording. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Extended Play. I'm your host. This is Stuart, and that is a fancy, fancy sign. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.